I think we're live, but I'm not sure. Um, it says 11 seconds, so maybe we are live. I don't know. It's always live. it always takes a little bit before I even, a little delay. before I figure it out. Yeah. So Iceman, Bruce Sculpton, uh, Lester LeSaber. Naming all Kaiser pickup. Nope, not a Kaiser pickup. I you know what? What what? That's Kaiser's a nice guess. Yeah, I guess, but I don't think Kaiser ever made a pickup. Oh, they had Jeeps. They had Jeeps, which were pickups. Kaiser Frazier. I know what the picture is, but I won't... Re you do know what it is? Iceman. Not many people would know what that is. It was... Uh, I'll give some hints. It was made in the 50s for two years. Oh, two years only. It's pretty rare. And uh, there were some around. I lived in Southern California, and there were some around. There was a guy that had two of them. That I thought he had them for sale at a reasonable price for the two of them, and I didn't buy them because I thought they were too rusty. But you know, Southern California rust is not much rust. It's a pal. <laughs> it's a pal. You're right. <laughs> okay, so now we got to know the story behind the pal. Yeah, not many people know what that is. Landon, Custom Landon Classics, Custom Classics is here. Thank you. Welcome. Um, Audi. Yeah, that was a very odd truck. It was uh, it was built by, I think, Powell Brothers in Southern California. And they took Plymouths from, I'm not sure what you're doing there, Kim. You're Sorry. Moving, Sorry, it's okay. Flicking Nothing's around changed. up there. How's our, how's our volume? Am I okay? Can everybody hear me okay? I'm looking at the meter over there. It doesn't look okay. Should I move this closer? I can I can turn it up a little bit. I don't know. No. I don't want to blast. I everybody. think we're okay. See how it's okay. just barely yep. spiking. It involves Plymouth. It sure does. They took Plymouths like from late forties, early fifties. They took the bodies off of them, so they had a chassis with an engine and a transmission. They put all new bushings in the front ends and bushings in the springs, and basically repaired the the the. Uh, frame and then they put their own body on them and sold them as uh, trucks. Landon Custom Classics. Yeah, mostly old parts. Good evening everybody. Hello sir. Very nice to have you here tonight. So yeah, it's kind of an odd truck, <clears throat> but interesting. I, I always kind of liked them. I kind of like the looks of them because they're simple, you know. Kind of the opposite of today's trucks. You can never get away with that today. Flathead 6 in a Three speed probably on the column. It almost looks like like a little toy truck. It looks like a Tonka toy. Like I mean the thing of it is is it's full size, but it looks like it should be one of those ones with that you sit in and pedal. You know what I mean? Doesn't it? Like only one person would fit in it and the roof comes off and you actually just sit right in it? I don't have any idea what a power would go for today. Of course the condition make all the difference in the world. There was one for sale in Phoenix. That the guy wanted a lot of money for about 10 years ago, a red one, and I, I couldn't buy it at the time. And uh, there's a list, a registry of ones that are around, and uh, not sure, I, I haven't looked at it in a long time. What engine's in a Powell? It's a, it's a flathead 6, Plymouth. the same one that was used in the Plymouth. Oh, okay. And then in the back, I have... So it's a, a conversion from a car to a truck? Sort of. Yeah, you could call it that. Who would do something like that? But they sold them crazy as, idea. They sold them as new vehicles. Let's see what I can find in my... Well, where did they get the bodies? They, they built the bodies. And you notice it's a lot of flat sheet metal and very few compound curves. The top was stamped out and that front piece uh, surround for the grill. But I think most of it was flat sheets that were curved in one direction, not a, um, not compound curves. So it was, uh, uh, where is it? Oh, I cannot find my, okay, here we go. Now, if I, I can drag my stuff over there, Kim? Yeah, yeah, yeah if you I put can. stuff over there. They also had a station wagon version of it. Do you want to make sure it's right okay. first? Okay, uh. Which go. today they would call an SUV. <clears throat> Keep going, bigger. Yeah, that's that's probably okay. So, that's the station wagon version of it, and then they had uh, Powell Brothers. 
Oh, 40 and 41 Plymouth chassis. I, yeah, it could have been 40 and 41. I was thinking it was like 50. Steel and fiber, fiberglass. Yeah, fiberglass body. You know that that front piece could be fiberglass. And then those things that look like where the taillights belong. Taillights are below those big round things. But those things slide out and they go all the way up to the back of the doors. And those are for fishing rods. So you could put fishing rods or some other long thing in there. Yes, they were 1955 and 1956. And they were built in... Uh, Somewhere in Southern California and LA area, I can't think of the name of the, uh, I'm not good with names. Yeah, rebodied, I guess that's, that's what it is. And, you know, what we did today, we were out on a tractor gathering wood that had fallen down and cutting wood. And then we kind of, we were both tired and came up here and didn't get ready or anything. We're just in our work clothes. So, sorry, ex ex excuses, but. It's kind of how we are today. You know what? We've been cramming our schedules with extra stuff. The weather's getting nicer. That's We're fine. trying to do more things, and it, 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 it's Oops, hard work. why did that happen? It is hard work. That's not what I want. Okay, um, I want to get back to the front view. They ran right. out of junkyard, chassis out of junkyards. That makes sense, though. See, and that's the front end. I can see if that was fiberglass... The, uh, the front piece and maybe the top was, but I always thought that was formed uh, sheet metal, but it may not be. Or is it make more because junk, junkyards ran out of chads? Yeah, you know, it's just a crazy plan. And they sold them. I mean, you know, they, they were around. The guy that I lived in San Luis Obispo and the Pismo Beach is right next there. And there was a guy, no, it's Grover Beach. A guy in Grover Beach had two of them. And I really wanted two of them, but. They had some rust on them, and rust, um, you know, what I considered bad rust in Southern California was not bad rust, really. Well, it seemed like it at the time. At the time, it seemed like, see, there's one with a chrome grill. What you do when you're, you're clamping something to something? I don't know what you're doing. I'm trying to get that oh, mic up a little boosting bit. boosting my mic up a little bit. Get nice direct sound. Oh, there's, there's... That looks like the Ramirez. Ramirez that was built in Mexico. I, I don't even know about that. So, um, yeah. I, I can find the Ramirez. She can look for that. So anyway, once in a while, there's a Powell around, and I'm just like, whoa, look at that. And uh, I'll probably never get one now. Basically, someone who wanted an SUV that didn't necessarily want to go. They were the buyers. Yeah, and that was that was... 50 years before the word SUV was around. Oh, what do you find there? Oh, oh she's looking for Ramirez. Ramirez. Here's his, yeah, let's see what the... Oh, that? She's poking around. That, that thing? That's a big truck. Looks cool. Oh, that looks like a postal van, but it isn't. This is an armored truck. It's a little armored truck. I like weird stuff that they only made a little of. Dugster. Hot food and man. The autocorrect. <laughs> autocorrect. I hate that sometimes. Oh, I've had some maybe there. Oh, that's an international, isn't it? Or no, is that a? That's a Ramirez. Really? Oh, that might be. Looks what, like a Scout. Is that what you're talking about, Mexican spec? By the way, good to see you, Mexican spec. Welcome to the stream. Shane is here. Shane is. Oh, oh Slant Daily Garage. What's up, suckers? <laughs> What's up, suckers? Yeah. Nice we, to see you. We were. Uh, I bet Shane. Does Shane know what that is? Here, let's switch back. Yeah, I can't. I don't know how to switch to oh, that. Oh, I got to switch back to a different screen. Yeah, the red Ooh. one. Just switch to that one. And and then, yeah, uh, Shane, you ever seen that? You ever seen one of those? It's a, underneath, it's a Mopar. <laughs> it's a different Mopar. Uh, oh, okay. 
You're looking for one that's original. Yeah, see, he liked my... I found the picture he liked. This one. No, nope, that's, that's not, not it. it. This that one, one here. That's the Ramirez. I never knew about that. That sure looks like a scout, but it also isn't, noticeably isn't. If you look in the right places, like the front end and the door handles. Wow. I, I like limited production stuff that actually got into production. But the the other one is uh, the red one I had up there. Yeah, that one. Put, uh, the, put the, we're talking about weird stuff. The Ramirez is made in Mexico. Mexican spec brought that up. That is a Powell. A Powell. And it was built in Southern California. They took 40-ish Plymouths, stripped the bodies off of them, so it was just a frame, rebuilt everything on the frame, you know, new bushings, new, just everything to make it nice. Uh, inline, flathead, six-cylinder, and they put their pickup body on it. They also made uh, a wagon. And uh, and they sold them for two years, 1955 and 1956, in Southern California. Doug Carb Conde. Uh, I was going to ask, God, there was something I wanted to ask. Oh, yeah. Shane, I and I can don't only buy so many of those carbs. But I'll bet it, that's fun to have. So, what did I want to ask Shane? I always want to ask Shane something, and then my memory is terrible. Four rats from Tijuana Power HRS. Yeah, what what engine is in Ramirez? <laughs> Four rats. You know, those cage things. Well, in a, um, in a, uh, Big airplane, the thing, a rat is a rat, ram air turbine, so if all the engines quit... Ah, drop, that's not a Ramirez. You keep dropping that in there. But the the uh, rat will pop out of the, probably out of the fuselage, and it's a ram air, ram air turbine, and it powers a generator, so you keep at least something going in the airplane with no engines running. So if you have a car run by a rat, you'd have to be going fast. Brain fart. Yeah, it's a. I used to see him in Southern California when I was young, you know, like 16, 17, you know, that was 1970 ish. They were, there were some around, not a lot, but there were some. And of course, they were built in Southern California, so. Let me see that, get it right. The rats are from Guadalajara, Guadalajara, I don't know how to pronounce it, probably. Rats from Tijuana are always drunk. You know, I've never been to Tijuana. That's probably wise because it's uh, probably a pretty wild place. I go to the more calm places. Calm places. Well, like uh, yeah, like where I go, this place here, uh, Algodonas. One Eyed Cat, how you doing? We're looking at weird stuff. Oh, he likes weird stuff. I don't know. At one time, his car wasn't weird. Oh, yeah, he would the, love something the, like this. The road toad. Yeah, that, something yeah different. there you go. With some character. Different kind of character. Yeah, you know, I watched uh, Tavo in uh, Australia. He did a live on Saturday. Was it Saturday night our time, which was Sunday oh, morning? Oh, man, there were some time. beautiful cars the, in Australia. The video was a little rough because he was walking around with his phone, but there were lines of road toads. 60, 61, and 62 Valiants and a couple of Lancers. And they were, of course, right-hand drive. But it was really cool to see so many of them. Do yourself a favor. Don't go to Tijuana. Yeah. I drive that. Which one? What is that? Oh, that's another... Uh, uh, Ramirez. Ramirez. Look at forward control Jeep. Some cool-looking weird... Yeah, you know what... I Ford Control Jeep is, Kim? A what? Ford, Ford Control Jeep. No. It's a pickup, but it's kind of, I mean, it's obviously a Jeep, but it's kind of weird. Yeah, look at that one. There we go. Got to swap pictures. There's a Ford Control Jeep. That's sweet. I knew a guy that had one. It looks actually, like it got one ton axles on it or something. Actually, it was, well, it's a four-wheel drive Jeep. It's just real short wheelbase. It's a Jeep. And they made a pickup out of it, and the engine's between the 
you know, it's a typical early van, but that was done before all the early vans were. I think it was 50s up through like early 60s. I had a friend, his father had one, that was his work truck. And uh, when I got, I've never seen another road toad in the wild. Oh, they're around, they're just getting... People don't take them out all the time. They, yeah. they end up only going to shows and stuff like that. We, we got to get... Tavo hopefully he posts a video on that show because he did the live and it the video was really rough but I didn't care because I wanted to see the stuff because he did it on a phone where the connection probably wasn't perfect but there were just lines of road toads there was one and he showed I said hey look a road toad and he's like what's a road toad so that was 60 61 62 valiant or a 62 lancer so then and then he moves his camera I said oh there's two of them and then he moved the camera, and there's a whole line of them. He goes, there were like nine or ten of them. And it was, uh, um, it was pretty cool. Yeah, 60, you know who coined that, the Road Toads, I think it was Tony. Tony, uh, you know, UTG, when he was writing articles in magazines, he wrote an article and called it the Road Toad, and it really stuck, you know. I see 11 people in here, only four lines. <laughs> yeah, thanks, uh. So, yeah, I like that. I like the, uh, the the likes. Yeah, there's yeah there's a road toad. Oh, that's that's the one I like. Sixty and sixty one I really like because of the tail lights. The sixty one I think is the only one that has those little uh, fake uh, louvers on the little fins back there. And then the sixty two had lights. The tail lights are in a different spot, but still look good. You know. Can't see the likes go up anymore. It's weird. You refresh you will see oh I see yeah it, it's weird I, I've noticed that when I'm uh, looking at YouTube I push a like and the only like I see is mine until I refresh the screen and then instead of one or two likes all of a sudden there's like 50 you know there's there's one for for you I know you like the the, the, wagons. the wagons a little weird I would like a little the, weird they're all weird I would like the wagon just because I like wagons because they got space in them but you know uh, the original, the 60, was a four-door sedan only. And I liked the the first year. And the second year, I guess, 61, I guess it was a two-door hardtop and wagon. Thanks, Shane. We appreciate the hype. So, so uh, We really enjoy you on Wednesday nights. It's not, we, oh, we, yeah, Wednesday nights. Wednesday, I, I missed a Wednesday night because we were busy doing something. I was like, what did I do? I missed Wednesday night. But... Uh, uh, I always, uh, I always try to make the Wednesday night, uh, Shane and Dallas live, that, cause you guys do some good, good stuff. It's not just, oh yeah. The other thing I like about the 60 and 61 is the dash cause 62, they change the dash. Oh yeah. There's a, oh, you just had it up there. What was the one you just had up there? The, that yellow one. Yeah. That's a 61, I think. Says because, 61. Okay, because it's got... It says. I, it doesn't mean the internet is always right, but that's it a, says. That's a two-door hardtop. Yeah, and it's got the little fake uh, louvers back there on the fins. But I really like those taillights better than 62, and I like the original dash. And, you know, one of the reasons I do is because I had a neighbor in 1960 when I was six years old, and she bought one, a new one, a white one. She took me for a ride in it. I just thought that was, you know... Brand new car, and I'm a kid, and I get to go for a ride, and I just always remembered how much I liked the 1960 uh, uh, Valiants. Yeah, I'd love to find a wagon. You know, I see them every once in a while for sale, but they're usually uh, they're usually uh, pretty rough. This coupe is good in two tone. Yeah, they, they are a weird looking car, but I don't care. I I just. I mean, that was the era of weird-looking cars, all kinds of fins and stuff, you know. There, show the rest of that dash. Oh, yeah, look at the front end. looks good, too. Yeah, see, that's the 60 and 61 dash, which I really like. And that's an automatic. It's got the push buttons on the left side of the steering wheel. And the the, uh, the manual transmission. Oh, that's right. They had the push-button automatics. And the manual transmission had a shifter on the floor, but it kind of it kind of swooped around underneath the seat. And I always, in her car, I was looking at it. Where does that shifter go? Where does it go? It goes under the seat. Well, you know, it goes into the floor somewhere under the seat. Uh, cat eye taillights. 
There was a two-door hardtop in a gas station scene in Corvette Summer. Hmm. Man. And I guess, I don't know if they had utes on that body in uh, Australia or not. I really like the utes. I wonder what the arrow numbers are. Oh, who knows? What I heard was um, they were trying to make it look more like the Mercedes or something because that was becoming popular in the late 50s. That is just... Uh, Oh, uh, what was his name? <laughs> Names escaped me. Um, oh, that's somebody we know? No, 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 no. Uh, the designer. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, somebody uh, who... Exner. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, you got it. it. That's just pure Exner right there. You know. Don't shoot me. Spare tire bump on the... Sometimes called the toilet seat. Oh, yeah, I can imagine that. Well, you know what was really called the toilet seat was the front of the Edsel. Because people now call it a horse collar, but... Man, in the late 50s, I was a little kid. All I remember is all the laughing about they put a toilet seat in front of the heads. So, I mean, that was that was a joke. Um, never heard of a horse collar until like 40 or 50 years later. Nobody wanted to say toilet seat anymore. You know, find a 58. Oh, There's a 58. Uh, yeah, that one right there. Yeah. Okay, you gotta swap go it over. There. I forgot. Yeah, there's a maybe a different angle. I'll see what I could find. Yeah, that's the one they, they call it a horse collar now, but then everybody said toilet seat, nobody said that. So yeah, it's a grill has been called many things. Dizzy Izzy, how you doing? We're looking at weird stuff tonight, Dizzy Izzy. You got a really weird beak there. My God. Yeah, there's a fifty eight. Oh hi Dizzy Izzy. Nice that's to a, see you in the stream. Toilet seat. Actually, that's a pretty good picture right there. What are those things on the hood? What are those things on the hood? Oh, I don't know. Let's Somebody see if there's any more pictures of it. Zoom. Oh, I don't know. Um, those are really strange. See if I can get a bigger picture. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't really matter, I think. I just never saw anything oh. like that. I can't get it. You can't get We're it. We're on Reddit. I gotta... Oh, and that one you just showed was a real weird one. Because it's a, um, it was a two-door wagon. There were only 900-something two-door wagons made, 58, 58 Edsel. Hmm. Yeah, There's one that's more our speed. Oh, yeah, that looks like something we own. That's, <laughs> everything we own is junk. <laughs> everything we own is junk. That's our Edsel. Now, I was starting a compact series in 1960. Only lasted a few years. Richard Petty's five... My 13th win was in a 62 Plymouth. Yeah, the thrill starts with the grill. Yeah, right. And that was a mistake. Um, well, what was really a mistake is, it wasn't even a mistake. They came out with a mid-priced car that was supposed to be between Mercury and Lincoln. Kind of like Oldsmobile or, or uh, Buick, something like that. Price range. <laughs> big downturn in the in the economy right when the thing came out well they couldn't have predicted that you know they needed to come out with a compact car like Studebaker did in 59 but they, they missed it you know, just so I would never call it a mistake I'd just call it bad timing extra styling look at 56 Dodge Royal Lancer with their beautiful three-tone paint jobs weird fits me to a T yeah but this is you don't have such a weird car you have you have a valiant after it came out of its weirdness. Okay, you're looking at the three tone. Oh, that's a convertible. Uh, yeah. Oh man. Well, Exner. Yeah, there you go. There's a three tone. Fifty-six die. Yeah, look at that. What I really liked was a fifty-seven. 57 Plymouth, 57 Dodge, 57 DeSoto to me was like a work of art. Uh, to you, it's junk. To me, it's restorable, restorable classic. To me, you know, I'd like to think that, that that piece of junk Edsel that we just looked at with the bullet holes in the windows and everything, yeah, I'd like to fix that up, but I have to be real and go, you know, I don't... I don't have any way to finance that anymore. When I have, you know, when I'm working, I'm making good money. And then when I'm not working, it's like, it gets a little tougher to live. So, 
you know, I can I can do some things. Rick Salmon, how you doing? So, um, yeah, it's just a, it's just a. I think the lavender was pretty. What was that? The lavender on. There was one? a lavender one. You know that was kind of popular back There's then. There's one there. That was that kind one's of on popular the three back tone then. though. Here's the three tone lavender. Yeah, that, that's is that a convertible? convertible? That's a convertible. Yeah. Here's the heart. Pretty stuff. Fifty-seven Desoto convertible just sold on Bring a Trailer for one hundred forty-two grand. Oh man, I love fifty-seven Desotos, but I, I'm not really a big fan of convertibles. Although I had a '66 Mustang convertible, a GT, I had it for about a year, and I only drove it once with the top up because it was drizzly kind of rain. It's in Southern California, it's like I'd go over to that car, unlatch the top, and put the top down every time I drove it, except once. And so I did like it, but I still I'm not a big fan of convertibles. You know, I'd I'd much rather have a. I like two door hard tops with the big open span in there with no pillar. Yeah, 56, they were trying to make fins and they're putting chrome strips on top. Like a 55 Plymouth to me looks really good. And the 56, they basically told, basically tried to make fins by putting that cap on it. It looked kind of silly. It's like Studebaker put caps on their back fenders to, to work. Well, that was even worse. They put big fin caps on the back of a car that didn't have fins. See, kind of weird last, the short tail fins with the chrome. Yeah, okay. I was told Grandma had one of the Dodge them wagons uh the pink one yeah i remember that name but i didn't know about that till years later i didn't know about it back then i remember always telling my father my father was very traditional kind of you know brought up in the 20s and 30s and 40s and you know the cars of the fins came out oh yeah there you go that's not a wagon god there might not have been many wagons yeah, that's what I was saying. I never saw a wagon. One of 57 DeSoto. But anyway, my father, I'd tell him, I, I was a little kid, you know, oh yeah, there's a little chrome extension to make fins. Uh, I'd tell him, you know, I want a car with fins. He, that, he hated that stuff. We had friends in a 59 Chevy, and he says, you got to lift everything over the back of those fins to get stuff in the trunk. That's terrible. He liked the trunks that the back end rounded down like this, so the trunk opening was right by the bumper. So you didn't have to lift stuff, lift stuff. Yeah, did you look up Lefemme wagon? I did, and we didn't get any pictures of didn't get Lefemme any pictures. wagons. I got this wagon, but this is a Sierra wagon. Yeah, that's just a 56 Dodge something, yeah. Yeah, the Lefemme seems like it's a, um, that package right there. Pretty, though. So maybe they had a pink a wagon, but it was not LFM. I mean, tonight was leftovers for me. All good. <laughs> They're talking about what they ate. Yeah, that looks kind of cool. I mean, that's a good color, pink and white. I don't know. I Today I'd drive it, but, you know, then probably you not. Wouldn't have been running looking for the LFM. So, <laughs> so the, you know, now it's just a cool. Goodbye, so me, LFM. It's a classic looking car. Worse was Studebaker with the add-on dual headlights. Yeah, Studebaker had these. I'll use my hands. They had single headlights, and then they, they put these things on there to make it the quad headlights. Yeah, look up 58 Studebaker. Um, anything. Yeah, they did that. My favorite of the Studebakers weren't even Studebakers. They were uh, the Packards. They were, everybody called Packard Bakers because the Packard guys hated them. But they were probably the best Studebakers ever built. Yeah, look at that. It's like a, it's like an adapter. It's like an adapter to make a the four headlights. You know, now I don't care now, you know, but then that, that looked terrible. Um, you know, the, the Packard Bakers, look up 58, 1958 Packard. And it is, um, there were, there were several of them, and any of them looked good, I think. Uh, like the Packard Hawk. Look at the, okay, the Packard, they did that. Oh, they did it on the Hawk? Oh, no, that's not a Hawk. That's a Packard uh, something else. There's the Packard Hawk. At least they didn't do it on the Hawk. 
I think the Packard Hawk, a lot of people don't like it. It's one of those cars. You either like it or you hate it. I really like the Packard Hawk. I think it's the best looking of any of the Studebaker Hawks. Yeah, that's the one. That had a different, that's a bigger car. They had a uh, different top on it. I think it's a decent looking car, but those headlights are kind of silly. Uh, let's see. I'm not keeping up with the, uh, yeah, there's a Packard Hawk. Yeah, big wide fish mouth grin things. There were people who didn't like that. And those silly looking fins on the back, those are just tack on fins. Uh, fins! We need here, more here. fins! Anyway, yeah, the Studelac Hawk with it. Yes, there were cars. God, my brother was looking for When my brother bought the 63 Plymouth, he was looking for a car. And we found out, uh, I think it was a 62. Now, this would have been 1971 or 72. This was a 10 year old. Studebaker Hawk that had a small block Chevy in it. We went out and test drove it, and I wanted to get it, and he didn't really I'll like it. I'll be right it. back. I'm listening, though. I'm he listening. Didn't, he didn't really like the car. And then he bought the 63 Plymouth the Fury. I'm really glad he bought the, the Plymouth. But that that Hawk was, I drove it. It was, it was nice. But, yeah, people used to put Cadillacs in it. It was one of those for sale in Mexico with no emblem of Studebaker. I had to go Google search to see what it was. Yeah, and this one, this this what they called the people call it they didn't the company never call it but the uh, Packard Bakers were 57 and 58 Packards that were built on Studebaker bodies and I still think they were the best Studebakers ever built and uh, and then in 56 they still had the Studebaker or the Packard body but the Hawk the Studebaker Hawk got the Packard V8 in 56 and I had a friend that had one of those. I've had a lot of fish hooks in mouth. <laughs> that. Dizzy. You, you went and got something. Just what my did you coffee. Get? Oh, you got your coffee. Yep, yep. Oh, Jonathan W. Jonathan W. has a Packard Baker. You know, I haven't watched him in a while. I used to watch him a lot. Packard Baker that he got the engine going. Yeah, it's probably a 289 Studebaker with a supercharger maybe. I don't know. I think most of them were. What's I, uh, this thing? Oh, it's a USB thing. Oh, I don't know. Some go kind, ahead, go ahead. Some You're kind of good. stuff on it. You're doing good. Fins, 59 Bonneville has short fins, but yeah, you get four of them. Yeah, that's that's pretty funny. Girls like their coffees, Kim. <laughs> well, I drink mine. I drink mine. Oh, there's a crash behind me. I don't hear any crashes. What is that? you got a piece of... We don't talk about the crash. 040 sheet metal. What are you doing? That's a piece of aircraft sheet metal that I made a desk for my kid. That was the top of the desk. Or the back of the desk. That was the sheer web of the desk. When he was a kid, he did all his homework on that. And Kim recently took it apart. I don't know why you bought this piece of sheet metal. Well, we have stuff happening. You keep the chat That's entertained. A of, it's a piece of 2024 T3 aircraft skin material. Expensive stuff. I don't know why I used that. It had scratches on it, I think. It was convenient at the moment, so I made it desperate. For my kid, brought it home, set it up. He was happy. What are you doing? I'm not sure. You don't know what you're doing. You're, I bet you should. Like you're making some kind I of... I rarely know what I'm doing. You're making some kind of thing right while we're... Right in the... Yeah, we're actually going to do something. Kim fixes things. <laughs> Kim fixes things. Kim fixes things. For the 59 keep, keep GM cars, you know how how affluent the owner is by now, vertical. Oh. By how vertical the fins are. Are they more Well, expensive? you know, you know, 59, I think the Chevys look great. Those... Uh, Batwing Chevys, I think, look really good. 59 Pontiac Chevy, you get four of them. We had friends when I was a kid that had... What are you doing? We had friends in uh, that had a 59 Pontiac wagon. We used to go all over the place in that thing. And uh, I thought it looked cool because there was big pods on the back with four fins. What Buick... Oh, Buick had those big lights that were fins above the lights that went like that. I had friends that had a 60 Buick. I liked the 59 better. And then uh, Oldsmobile. What did Oldsmobile have? Fifty nine. Uh, uh, we're gonna have to look that one up. Can I can't think of it. Yeah, arts and crafts. She, arts and crafts. 
what you know she brought, brought over here? She brought my favorite solder station. <laughs> well, they're going to get to see it in action. because I'm. Why are we going to solder in the middle of... In the middle of... You're going to work on my microphone in the middle of a video. Yeah, that's, sure. that's, that's, that's reflective on the, on the camera. That's a... That's a D104 mic, which is a power mic from back in well, go ahead and show them. 70s or something. It's just Where's those connectors that you just got from Amazon? They're on my bed, on the corner of the bed, right by the door. All right, well, you be entertaining. I'm getting busy. She's actually going to start soldering. Or as the Brits would say, I used to work with some British people on airplanes. They say, soldering, solder. Solder. And then... Me being a dumb American in England would go solder and they, huh? Solder? What's wrong with you? Soldering. That's high end soldering. You know what's really nice is this thing is a, uh, sadly, Chinese version of a really good soldering station. And you turn this knob and it changes the changes the temperature and there's a digital readout and everything. It was pretty cool and I bought it. Some guy did a review on one on another YouTube channel. Farpoint Farms. I don't know if you like electronics, radios and stuff, Farpoint Farms. Okay. Anyway, he did a review. Oh, you're scratching my back. Oh. So, <laughs> the old chick calls it the old chicken joker. <laughs> That's the name for the mic. Uh, yeah. Let's see. So, he did a review on that soldering station. And he liked it. and So, I bought one. I'm really glad I bought it. It's uh, it's really nice. Copy of a Hacko, Hacko, H A C O soldering station. I think that's the name. The one I used to use was a. It was a. It looked like this, but it was a Weller. Much. What are you doing? You're adjusting stuff right in the middle. You're messing with cameras. Back scratchings for a different channel. Yeah, we got a. Is that a special chair? Is that a? You know, should we tell them the truth about what we're doing here? This, this, this table we have, which is our, our studio, was my former wife's. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, like a uh, massage, massage table. It's a massage table, and it's padded, but then we put covers on it and monitors and other stuff. And it's a nice table, it and it has nice. adjustable height legs. Yeah. So we could put it down where you need to be for the studio. It worked so, perfectly. So it was a soldering station. I just said the, it was a Weller, I think. A Weller. And it was much higher quality than this one. Well. But it did the same thing. But, you know, this one works so well. I don't care. Good job, everyone. I just refreshed. I see 12 likes. Well, thank you. Thanks, Shane. Am I allowed to call you by your name? Is that rude? Do I have to call you Professor Shane. P? Professor P. That sounds like... I gotta go take a no. No, oh, <laughs> don't make it weird. Jeez. Oh man, oh, good job, everyone. I just refreshed this as well. Okay, yeah, my buddy had a 1962 S code formal line black. It was like new. Finn works well on his car. What did I miss? I don't know. I missed something. Mexican Specs responding, and I don't know what he's responding about the lower fin. Worked well on the car. Weller made, maybe still good. Yeah, Weller, you know, when I was a kid, and I had a paper out, and if we go out and get new subscribers, you get points. And I took my points, and I bought a Weller. Remember the soldering? What are you doing? There's two of me. The Weller soldering gun. I bought one of those. I built my first... CB radio, which is a walkie-talkie, when I was in, uh, I think I was nine years old. In 1963, I was in third grade, and I built a, a Heath kit uh, walkie-talkie. Sorry, Buff, that was limo. Limo, limo, limo. Mine's in the bag. It's like, limo, limo, limo. Oh, limo, limo. all kind of Black. arts and crafts. Arts yeah. and crafts, people. So, this... Jeez, look at this. No happy endings here. Oh, guys, so, come on. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I should keep my hands to myself. So, I know he's itchy. He's got X I, I've him. got <laughs> some kind of back dryness thing. you got to keep putting stuff on it, and it itches. And you know how you... She'll come up and scratch my back, and it feels so good for about 
30 seconds. He and makes funny like, noises. It's really fun. Okay. They have green screen and everything. Oh, yeah. Kim, what are you doing? You make, you gave away our green screen. You got this big old... Mess. Oh, they thought we were magic. <laughs> okay. So this... Yeah, you know what? Is the green. Dugster. It's gross. Yeah, I bought... Wouldn't work. I bought an old CB radio. Because I kind of got into the... You know, it's like old cars. Old CB radios. And there's a live that I watch on, on Thursday nights. And the guy is an old CB radio guy. So we do. I watch this stuff. So I bought a, a used CB radio for next to nothing. And didn't have a mic. So I bought this mic. And then... It, the, the it used a nine volt battery in the little nine volt uh, thing that holds a battery was yeah the, so the bad wires. so from the uh, online bookstore a la Amazon see they can't see that they can't see it well they can see it now yeah it was just shiny okay he's the world gun we got some make replacements Lester LeSabre you made heat kits too huh yeah I I did that um. And, you know, that was kind of a big thing for a, a circuit board. But circuit boards then were, uh, yeah, they were uh, they, they were much different than today. Today. Okay, look, it's, it's already pre- uh, Oh, pre -ready. You got it easy. I need an extension cord, but luckily we can plug in right here with it. One of my best friends up in Idaho works for a company. They do electronics. He's my age. He's 70. I'm a little shaky. I, I really have trouble soldering now because I... Well, maybe I'll do it then. So I shake a little bit. You keep talking. I'll okay, get I'm... some work done around here. So he is not shaky at all. And he does soldering with this little tiny needle-like thing under a microscope. And nobody That's else wild. In, nobody else in that place can do that. And they bring this stuff to him. And he's, I said I said to him, Gary, I go, Gary, I'm too shaky to do that. He goes, oh, if I start shaking, he goes, I'll, I'll never be able to do this again. So, uh, yeah, 10 4, 10 4. Yeah, you know, we kind of started using radios around here, the, the MERS radios, M U R S, MERS, or MERS, or MERS, whatever they are. It's just little hot, just little tiny walkie talkies. They're only good like around the property. Okay, you're going to point to this. Well, that's where we put the, the battery has a clip, and we use some green wires, but we, this is janky. We're going to put a real connector in it. So, because we had to test it to see if it would even work at all, because it was like not, not putting out a signal. So we finally, man, did we have more trouble? We, I literally took a battery apart so we could get a good <laughs> enough connection. I'm like, what is going on? She destroyed a battery to. I destroyed. To the take battery. the the little clips off. Of it. I took the clips off of it, but you can't really connect to them because they're made of like chrome steel or something. Like they're just garbage. Oh, why does it say 816? What, what That's the temperature in Fahrenheit. Well, what temperature should it be to solve? You, you get it down about 800, 790, something like that. Really? Okay. Well, it depends on what you're doing. I mean, if you want to do a fast, little tiny solder, yeah, would crank it up a bit. But if you want to do, I don't know, it just depends on what you want to do. And I don't know how accurate that is. I mean, we should take a heat gun and find out how. Yeah. Where's uh, Shane, you, okay, that's between Shane and Colleen. Uh, Colleen, what did I... I was expecting an email from Colleen, I thought. I don't know. Um, so, we're actually doing Kim Fix's Things work on, on the live. I didn't yes. expect this. Yes, yes, we are. So... we got to get something done. Car painters who could paint well sober. So they shook so bad, had to get them drunk first, and magic happens. You know, it's weird. My vodka and OJ, part of the materials list, yeah. But you don't put that in a paint gun. Oh, they you put it in a paint gun and just shoot it in your mouth. Everybody would freak out. Shooting yellow paint in my mouth. Uh, Alcohol give you the shakes. That stuff here's is the thing. rough. My left hand shakes. Uh, yep. some, some days not much, some days more. So if I'm soldering and I hold the solder in the left hand, it, it, the solder is shaky. And if I hold this years and years doing radiators, I hold the torch in the left hand and you hold the solder in the right hand. And everybody thought I was left-handed, but I go, oh, the solder's the important part. But uh, now I struggle with that. Now if I rest my hand on the edge of something, like right here, I mean, you can't see that. If I rest my arm on the edge of something, I'm pretty good. But I still have to be careful with it. And if I'm uh, 
if I'm painting, like a paint gun, big swipes like that, I don't shake at all. I'm good. And I can paint with either hand quite well. Um, and I enjoy, I enjoy spray painting. And if you haven't seen my painting, we do have a video about cheap painting on a car. I painted the hood of the Valium. Yep. And tell them about your Thursday night CB Live, because you really enjoy well, see, that. It's Thursday night CB Live. I'll mention the channel. It's, uh, it's Wagon Master 390, or is it 390 Wagon Master? I don't remember. If you look up Wagon Master, you'll find oh, it. You can. And, and he just talks about CB stuff, you know, and it's a bunch of old farts in there. Like CB radios. It's what you like. It's okay <laughs> so, to like things. So I sit there and... He is I, so self-conscious about liking CBs. Well, because it's silly now. It was it's, a... Th it's, it's a, a hobby, old, arts and crafts. It's like a 50 year old thing now. But now, you know what's been rolling? They call it skip. It's really propagation. So the skip's been rolling like every afternoon here in Tennessee. I can hear people in Mexico, on, and they use Channel 9, which is emergency channel here. But nobody uses it for emergency anymore. But you put it on Channel 9, you hear all these people in Mexico talking, you know, and I can just want to grab my microphone and talk to somebody in Mexico on the CV. So it's, it's pretty cool. And he thought he was keeping it, hiding it from, literally hiding it from me. He didn't want to be embarrassed that he had a hobby. Well, uh, what did your previous turbo wives do to you? Turbo, turbo Tom, how you doing? Yeah, 11 meter. A lot of people call it 11 meter, but then the amateurs hate that because they used to have 11 meters and they took it away and gave it to the CBers. So, you know, it's right next to 10 meter. You know, I'm thinking about Thursday night, instead yeah. of being on the live with the CB guys, there's uh, the local amateur radio club has a meeting on Thursday night, and uh, and I think I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go to that. Hey, Mexican mm -hmm. spec, it depends on what frequencies it is. 11 meter band's pretty hot in the daytime. I like it at night because not many people are there, and then you don't need any power, and you can skip, but during the middle of the day... With Mexico right now, I go out there at noon, one o'clock or two o'clock in the afternoon, and all I hear is people speaking Spanish. There's a woman that's got some power down there. Uh, I don't know what she's running, but man, I hear her so clear here. But I don't know where she is. She's speaking. Do you want me to take this Spanish. off so we can really spray it really good? Oh, you need to clean that. I don't. No, this I don't. component here is re is where you adjust the power. Can you see it? Yeah, where see, you adjust the power. The power. Mike, so you need to. Adjust it so it doesn't overmodulate. And boy, it, uh, it it's really scratchy. And this, so this what does this like turn into? Yeah. The CB channel? No, no, it's a Kim Fixes Things soldering channel. It's Kim Fixes Things. It's and it's our life. Can... Yeah. At night, at night, if the skip comes in at night, you probably don't even know it until you call somebody and you hear somebody like 2,500 miles away reply. Yeah. And then it's like really nice. It's very so. simple. And this is not an original statement. It's like, but this is a show where we talk about whatever we want. Cobra because LTD. it's our show. Cobra LTT with a side mic plug with an attic and basement. Main 40 channels, 40 channels upstairs, 40 channels downstairs. 93% modulation with the amplifier. Oh, yeah. See, I, I used to always run Turner, uh, Turner Plus 3 mics. You couldn't turn them up. They go like from 1 to eight or something you can turn them up much past about two or they just start over modulating but the turner uh, the turner was my favorite but they're just hard to find now my dad was wa eight b u l see that now that's amateur see i'm thinking you know what happened when, you, you know what happened in 2020 i was taking the class and i was we were like two weeks from taking our you know, it's one night a week. Two, maybe it's two nights a week. I think it's one night a week. We were like two weeks from taking our test, and the, the you know, the pandemic hit. So then they wouldn't let us in the multi-purpose room anymore, and we couldn't take the test. And then I went back to work for thirty to ninety days. Turned out to be two years. So I never did it. Well, I think I'm gonna go back and do it, just to. Uh, just to do it. Because it's something he likes. Because well, we are allowed to indulge okay. in the things that we enjoy in life. I've always been like a structural engineer, uh, aerodynamicist, that kind of very mechanical stuff. And, uh, and cars, which are very mechanical kinds of things, especially old cars. But I like the CBs, so, and I like radio. And I built radios when I was a kid, but it's not my strong point. 
So for me to go past that test would really would really be something. Yeah, no code needed. You don't need a co you don't need code even for the amateur extra. And see if once I take the get the first license, which is the technician license, I'll be studying right away to take the uh, the the uh, what's the second one called the general class. And then I'm going to have to study pretty hard to uh, to get the amateur extra. But to me, I don't even know if I want to operate be a, an amateur operator that much. I want to. It's just a uh, challenge myself to go past the tests, if nothing else. Uh, my CB handle I chose when I was nine, Doughboy. <laughs> and I had, I'm embarrassed to tell you what mine were back then. Back when I was traveling in the 90s, I used to use CB on the on the highway talking to truckers, and I was hacksaw. But I haven't used that in years. More recently, should I tell them what it is? Uh, if you want to, that makes it seem reasonable. I use reasonable. a couple of them, you know, but uh, Buff, don't be embarrassed by liking CB this coming from a hardcore coal mill modern guy. Uh, I liked, uh, I, I used uh, Groundhog, and then uh, if you're on sideband, I've never had a sideband radio. I've got to get a sideband radio. And sideband, you, you use numbers usually. I use uh, BDX 979. There's actually a club. UDX, which is Utah, what the hell is UDX? Utah DX, which is long distance stuff. So it's kind of a club. Everybody joins. I have nine seven nine. Well, I was skinny. You come round in my twenties. Oh, I did that. You know, in the Air Force, I became round because the food was so damn good. Everybody told me military food was terrible. It wasn't. It was good, and I ate too much, and then I had to lose some weight, and then. Uh, Man, they had a program called Fat Boy in the Air Force, and I had to go stand in front of some colonel and salute him, and he chewed my ass for being too fat, and he looks at the paper, and he goes, wait a minute, you're here because you're two pounds overweight? He goes, I want you to lose that two pounds, and I never want to see you again. <laughs> I was like, yes, sir. So I lost the weight. And then many years later, I really gained some weight, and I ended up in the hospital with diabetes and problems and I lost 100 pounds. We're taking care of them now. now. We got a sugar down to reasonable range. So so my fatness was never a uh, was never anything no doughboy CB handles. Uh, 40 meters takes you worldwide. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can do with with ham radio. But I'm to me it's more just yeah, I'm 70 years old. I might not have much time left. It's like I've been wanting to get that license since I was a teenager. I had friends in junior high got their licenses. And it's just like, God, I should do it. I should do it. Just never did. I was always working on cars and airplanes. And now it's like, I should do this before I get any older. Just And you almost did. It's stupid. Yeah, it's yeah I was so close. Stupid well, I terms. Checked up, I took the practice test and I got an 87 on it, which would have been a passing grade, but I don't want to get an 87. I want to get a hundred. <laughs> so, yeah, unfinished project. Diabetes. Diabetes. Uh, Doesn't he look like Wolford Brimley a little bit when now that you see it? I used to think that. I've been called that. Um, Say diabetes in the deepest voice you can muster. So and don't do it. That's me. diabetes. Diabetes. Uh, it took me two guesses. My Fury was my first car, so Fury, yeah, this would be my new one. You know, Fury, man, what Fury, you have, to, wait a minute, I, I noticed something last week, Mexican Spec, I think you said you have two 63 Plymouths, is that right? Man, that'd be this big. W350, what's W350? Sansui. Eat your Quaker. Oh, I got the handcuffs. Quaker oats? That's full of carbs. I can't eat that. Kim bought me cookies tonight. She bought me cookies. Sugar free? Oh, I thought they'd be she okay. Goes, These are sugar free. And I go, yeah, how many carbs are in them? I couldn't believe it. There were 13, 13, 13 grams of carbs in each Here cookie. Here you go. Look, I got, I got this so I apart. Want, so I, we'll get it clean, nice and clean. Oh, did you get the stuff? Where's the stuff? Oh, well, we hardly even need the cleaner once it's all apart. Well, yeah, yeah. The yeah. cleaner's on the uh, 
It's on the kitchen table. But the grease Eat is all Quaker oats. The grease is all solidified. I don't want to eat Quaker oats. That just like that run my sugar up. I felt so good last time I went to the doctor. My sugar was, um, my sugar was uh, ninety one. That's excellent. My first three cars were pinto wagons. You know, I had like a fleet of pinto wagons, and some went came and went. And I had one bobcat wagon. I used to convert them to the little vans, but now I'm out of panels. So the next in a wagon, if I ever get one, I'll have to make my own panels out of fiberglass, or unless I can find a set of panels. Somebody on here, pin a wagon, pin a van panels. Um, and this is good. My first car, you spec 63 Plymouth Command 361, four door sedan, and the next is spec 63 Savoy. Well, the Savoy is a, I think, is a slant. Oh, you got a 60, 361, you got a big block. 63 Plymouth. Man, I love 63 Plymouths. I liked them when I was a kid. 63 Plymouths came out when I was in second grade, and I thought that was the best looking car I've ever seen. Those, those uh, what do you call them up front? The uh, parking lights in the tips of the fenders. All right, you can show your product. My product. This is not a sponsor. Not a sponsor. Yeah, I didn't even sponsor us. CRC. QD contact cleaner, and they had three different kinds of CRC contact cleaner. I had to guess which one I wanted. That'll probably come out like 150 miles an hour and soak this thing, so be careful. Okay. You, you're going to, oh, you're smart. You're spraying it on something first. I don't want to be sprayed in the face with it. I mean, when I was in fourth grade, I was big around, and I was tall. I had a real bad stutter and had frizzy hair. Lived in a beer neighborhood. Really? That's been interesting. You know, all of us lived in neighborhoods where things were strange to other people. <laughs> Let's see. My family bought me a Pinot to drive while I was working on the Fury. 72 sedan with 16, 1600 engine. That was a very rare car. Little British uh, pushrod engine. <clears throat> when did you have that Mexican spec? Did you get the... Uh, Upgrade done to the fuel tank, the longer neck, and the, and the uh, uh, whatever it was, uh, nylon or some kind of thing between the tank and the rear end. Biker neighborhood. Oh. I lived, what are that kind of neighbor? I lived when I was little. There were three houses in a row on would kind of the end of the neighborhood. Across the street, there was a big field and kind of a hill that my mother called a mountain, but it wasn't a mountain at all. It was a hill. And there were cows in there. And, uh, you know, you run around through there and try not to step in a cow pies. Yeah. Which, of course, we did a few times and come home. Oh, my gosh. I can remember stepping in a big old cow pie back in the day. Oh, and then my mother get mad because he get Oh, man. It would stink pie. to high heaven. Cow pie in the sun. You know what, though? I'd rather step in a cow pie than a dog. Well, the Fury has a big pie. block, power windows, air conditioning, power steering, but no power brakes. She also has a padded dash. You know, a lot of people think you need power brakes, but I didn't have power brakes on anything until I got much older. My uh, 64 Ford, that big old Galaxy, had manual brakes. Of course, they were drums, so they didn't take a lot of pressure. My 74 Matador, I ordered it with manual disc brakes. And I let a friend drive it, and he thought it was horrible. But uh, I, no problem for me. I could lock them up if I wanted I was old enough to drive them legally. Yeah. Wilfred Brimley was in the movie Cocoon. I remember Cocoon. I always thought the 1600cc was from Germany. I don't think so. I think that was a British engine. I think the... I think the... Uh, I don't know. You might be right, but I don't think so. It could be. It was a European Ford. It could have been German, but I always thought it was British. I don't know. I like the I like little push rod engines, little cast iron push rod engines. And you know what, Kim? We have one. What are you showing? That's oh, the, the contacts are nice and clean now. So I didn't even really have to rub them; they were just yicky. Uh, yeah, our heads are cut off, but on the bottom of the screen, that's because Kim put this camera for to look at what she's doing. So there's two of us. Okay. Uh, the woman that sold me the car told me she begged her husband for power steering and power brakes. He got the steering but refused to... Oh, that's weird. Refused to get power brakes. 
Well, you know, those old Chrysler products in the 60s with power steering, man, it, it those things had so much power, power steering. It felt like there was a bearing on the top of the steering column. It felt like it was disconnected, except they'd turn the car. And I kind of liked it. There were people that didn't like it because it was too much power on the steering, but you get used to it in a minute or two. I remember my bicycle passed a billboard advertising the new Mustang coming in April. Man, I remember the new Mustang when it came out. I was in fourth grade. Fourth grade? Yeah, I was in fourth grade. Fourth grade? Cow pies don't stink. No, I never thought cow pies stunk unless you got your face near them. The only time cow pies stink is when you go by a feedlot. And whatever they feed them in feedlots, oh my God. Yeah, chicken, turkey, and hog pies smell way worse. Yeah, that's why. You know one reason I don't have chickens? The mess. Because I, I have chickens otherwise. Uh, smells like money. Uh, 1600 Kent, England. 2000 CC, Cologne, Germany, I think. See, and then when the... That's kind of what I was thinking. And then the 2300 came out. It was similar to the 2000 CC, but it was different. It was a different engine, but it was an overhead cam. And I really don't know what that was. Is that an American engine? Yeah, 1600 CC Kent. Man, does that sound familiar? But man, that's pulling up the memory from 19, late 1970. Man, it was in the 60s, in 1963, when he ordered the car. People from back then didn't trust. Newfangled options like power brakes. Yeah, like me now. I'm 70 and I don't trust newfangled options like electronic crap. Self-driving cars. Drive-by-wire. <laughs> well, see, drive-by-wire is kind of like fly-by-wire. And I would have done so many fly-by-wire airplanes that, I don't know, they were trustworthy. But I'm tired of it. Alan Drab, how you doing? Uh, Welcome to the stream. Thanks for coming. Kim... Kim's over here, just to get everybody up to date, Kim's over here working on a microphone of mine, soldering. I'm done reason, soldering. Oh, you're done soldering? Yeah, I turned the solder The reason for the smell off. in feedlots is the starch in the high-grain diet. Yeah, whatever it is, it is horrible. Out in Arizona, there was a feedlot I have to, had to drive by. And it was windows up, recirculating air on, and still some of it leaking. 2.3 liter was Lima, Ohio, which a lot of people think is Lima, but it's Lima, like a Lima bean. And if you're in Peru, it's Lima. Uh, airplanes get so much more service than the average car does. Well, and military airplanes, which is, I was working on uh, drones, big, big drones, and they are so over-maintained. And we were working on new stuff. It was, yeah, I was working on research and development out in the middle of the desert. Careful. And, and we were... We were you allowed running, to tell them that uh, stuff? Yeah, I can tell them that. But we were working on stuff that was not just over-maintained. It was developmental stuff. So we were getting more... You know, we had to take it from not reliable to reliable and develop checklists and train line pilots and stuff. So drive-by wire sucks. If you grew up with carburetors... That lag when you hit the gas is horrible. You know, I don't think... Oh, yeah, my car's drive-by-wire. The the, the uh, gas pedal is, and there's no lag. Oh, well, there might be. I'm just slower than I Yeah, that's be. the thing. Is like, we're not <laughs> trying to... <laughs> I'm slower than I used to. No, if I, if I womp on it, the front wheels spin. I mean, it'll, it'll just throw gravel and dirt and leaves everywhere. It's got plenty of power, but there is there is a lag. But, I mean, we're just not... Driving it for that purpose when you're just driving, it doesn't. What need what it. I do like about the new technology that Mazda Six is a two point five liter four cylinder engine. It's got a hundred eighty four horsepower. I think and it feels which like doesn't sound like much, but then it's got a six speed automatic transmission. I shift manually, so I decide where where I know where the torque band is, and it's it's really good. And going down the highway. 70 miles an hour, it's always 37 or 38 miles a gallon. Unless I put straight gasoline in it without, you can buy gasoline here without the 10% alcohol. And if I put that gasoline in it, it's 40, 40 or 41, always. And the reason is there's more BTUs in the gasoline than there is in the alcohol. So fewer BTUs in alcohol, and it, it shows. Uh, 
But it, the, the cost is enough higher that it's not really worth it. But it is kind of fun to do if you want to fill up and and make sure you got more miles to go. Just fill it up with the expensive stuff. And it'll do it. But, you know, you can't get 40 miles a gallon out of a Plymouth Valiant with a slant 6 in it. Yes, you can! What? Who what, says? What, downhill with the engine off? Yes! <laughs> We'll put one of those carburetors like, uh, what's his name put on the, what's that guy who put a lawnmower carb and got 40 miles a gallon out of his 302? Oh, uh, 289, what's his name? Thunderhead. Thunderhead 289, yeah, that would, he's, he's an interesting character. We'll do that. Oh, yeah, they're friends with, uh. Tony wants to do that, we'll do that. Mook and, yeah, Mook. She doesn't do many, she's always on, uh, on all the, uh. All their videos but she does very few of her own you know she's going to school to be like a vet or something like that so. yeah, she's she's works at a veterinarian i think yeah she's smart uh, she's doing stuff you know i want to trust my life to my processes yeah i understand that too and i you know every time i get an airbus or a newer newer boeing product i'm thinking about that it's like i had friends that were airbus pilots back in the beginning of the a320s and, uh, oh man, I, one of them flew it for a couple of years before he went back to a Boeing. He went, he, he was a captain on a, they were both captains on A320s. One of them went from the A320 to a 747 as a captain. The other one went from an A320 after, I think, two months to a first officer on a 747 because he hated the A320 so much. He just, he hated the, the fly-by-wire systems. And early on, they had problems. Now, you remember the first commercial flight with a A320? They crashed the thing, crashing into a forest. Uh, I kind of want to draw the line at no steering leakage. He throttles sometimes kind of negotiable about, about how they work. You know, I've been running with the, with the fly-by-wire throttle for quite a while. And as long as it works, I like it. But the day it quits, I'll hate it. Uh, not about speed it's just not linear feeling to me when you hit the gas and things like that no. yeah you know you may be right maybe my mind my brain doesn't feel that millisecond anymore i've been watching uh there's a youtuber who got two of the uh what are those trucks called cyber trucks and they took one of them tore it all the way down and they were showing how the steering worked it's Interesting, I guess. When the government wants to control remotely all aspects of the car, it makes yeah, yeah. They want that's that's what all this electric's about. It's controlling your control. Well, some of it was about self-driving. Well, I think it's about control. Once it's self-driving, somebody else can drive it. In other words, turn it off. Just just leave you somewhere. Turn off the power to all the chargers. Shut the car off. I don't know. Absolutely. They love having control. Okay. Remember the Mercedes break by wire? We lost a ton of money on that. Super standard warranties because I, I don't know anything about it. I guess Kim's taking the thing away. What'd you do? You already fixed the mic? It's all back together. I just have to put the plate on the bottom, but we have to adjust it before we put the plate on. So, so now you can put automotive stuff back up on the screen? I sure can. I'm back, guys. Instead of me sitting here sideways? See, I've got a microphone with a clothespin. Kim put the clothespin so that it, so that it uh, tips up or something. Clothespin. All right, wait, wait. I'll come back. Let's see, because we maybe we should never do that again. Did anyone enjoy that particular segment? Well, I or was that just hard to watch? Is that a yes or a no? That segment there where I just did a little bit of repair with the solder. Kim, it was Kim fixes things. Now it's Kim fixed. Fixed things. Better budget a lot of money for local police departments to institute programs to remotely control car. How they use it? When, yeah, wonderful. Yep. They want to be able to shut down your car. They want to be able to regulate your speed. They want to be able to tell you, don't go this way, go that way to well, fix traffic. Which, I mean, in some cases it might be. There's good, but there's always something... Sketchy ice, on the back. Iceman. So all these new regulations are on the, on the automotive industry. 
bold of them to assume I'm buying a new car. Man, there's a lot of new cars out there that are not sold. Besides the cost. You know, Tony, UTG has it right. Make something simpler and cheaper again. It's like every car you get in has got all this stuff. All right, here's my take on it. Can I give my take on it? Oh, I guess you're going to give me a take anyway. Ooh, harsh. Okay. These electric cars, right? Batteries, electric cars. When they come out with it and they were trying to justify it, it seemed like something maybe, um, it could be good, right? Okay, batteries, we charge the batteries. I always thought there was going to be like, you know, batteries in the back of the car. You pull them out, you know, you stick them on the charger on the side in your garage. You stick your other battery in there and you drive off. And if you need a battery along the way, you stop at the gas station, you pull your battery out, you trade in for a charge battery, you stick it in and you go. Well, the problem is, is the batteries cost more than the car. They're most expensive part of the car. So you need a tracking device to keep an eye on that thing. Like the rest of the car is just computers and wires and stuff like that. The battery is huge. It's what, how much does those batteries weigh? I have no idea. They're just... the heaviest part of the car. They're like thousands of pounds, so you can't take them out. Well, now the whole car is a battery. It's a battery on wheels, and no one expected that. But the manufacturers figured out, like, oh, man, this whole battery thing is not so convenient. Until the batteries are small enough that you can pull one out, and until the cost is such that you don't have to have an armed guard to watch that battery, it's going to be bad. Oh, I have not seen that. Anyone's I agree, video? Mexican spec. That's part of the problem as well. Okay, here I'm, I'm going back one from there. Iceman, did you see Andy Wood's video on David Vizard's new Mustang having that wireless connectivity? Watch your throttle input speed. You, I, 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 I gotta watch that. I haven't seen it. Um, That's absolutely a thing that they want to do. They want to be able to send you a ticket in the mail or tell you. Like, you are driving recklessly, we can see from remotely, and then revoke your license or whatever they feel like they need turn you to do. Just turn you off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh. I mean, that's, that's what we're up against. And, and nobody can, nobody has stopped. Instead of the automakers saying, no, we don't want to go that way with cars, the politicians are telling the automakers, do it. Or else you don't get funding, you don't get tax breaks, blah, 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 blah. That's, you know, Turbo Tom's got a point. What's that? Seat belts, airbags, ABS, backup cameras. When is it too much? And I agree with that. It's, uh, the seat belts make sense. I don't know if airbags make sense. I mean, I don't airbags. Know if ABS makes sense. I drove more than half my life in cars without ABS. And I didn't crash into anything. I learned to modulate the brake pedal, you know. You don't have to ram the brake pedal to the floor. Uh, it's, it's, when they try and make everything too automatic, like the person driving the car needs to understand how to operate a motor vehicle regardless of all these features. They do make it nicer, maybe they make it safer, but how about instead of having airbags, you don't run into anybody. You stop running into people. Accidents happen. Airbags. Yeah, I'm, I, I can't comment much on uh, politics. I'm not going to go that far, but I mean, obviously, whatever's going on right now is bad. It's bigger things than just a president. Maybe a president can steer the ship a little bit, but like this is this is big players making these decisions, making trying to make these rules, trying to get this control, and you know, even presidents they let this Look stuff this. go because people were so. Yeah, the, um, you, you got to a ticket here. You, mail. I need to back up here, and you, it's scrolling by before I get to it. Okay, you need at? to You need to watch it. It even says in the owner's manual that the car is transmitting all that information back to manufacturer, even text messages with your phone when connected. So your phone's connected to your car, obviously, and so now your phone's connected to everything that's being sent back to the manufacturer, and they're going to sell all that information, of yep. course. Okay, scroll And you either up. consent... Scroll when you don't drive the car. Scroll it back up. Yeah. Well, and you know when you consent is when the 
the salesman showing you how everything works, and they, while they're doing that, they consent. And you I don't can, even know you consent. I cannot believe that cars right now don't require you to put your identification in them for them to even start. My, my I got a ticket mailed to me from New Jersey Turnpike. You know, I when the pandemic started, there's a bridge where you come out of Maryland into Virginia, and I used to go over that bridge a lot. And it's a, it's a toll bridge. They took the booths away. And the way you pay is they get your license number across. And then either you have the, the automatic thing, whatever they call that, which I didn't have. So when I go across, it's scrolling so quickly. When I go across that bridge, then they mail me a ticket, which was whatever the $6 for going across the bridge, plus 25 bucks for the fine because I didn't pay it. And there was no way to pay it. The only way to pay it is with the ticket. That just angers me. So, uh, yeah, tire pressure sensors. Distortion I like the tire... and distraction techniques. It's it's very prevalent in the media. Tire pressure sensors I like, but I don't know if they should be mandatory. I mean, I like them. Um, I, I think it was completely bullshit. Like, just yeah, no, inflate 08, your tires. Oh, eight, it became uh, required. And the ones, I had a Dodge... Uh, caliber that actually showed the four pressures i kind of like that uh were you in new jersey i have gone through new jersey and i have paid tolls in new jersey but i've um uh, the booths were open when i went through uh, and why also why do you have your real address on your registration well that's up got a match in some How places do, Hard to put much eye on the implications of lobby for regulations when everyone's screaming about hate issues and try. Yeah, I mean, you know, keep, you watch the news, which I don't watch anymore. They keep your eyes somewhere else. You know, they keep you talking about something that's not about what they're doing. It seems like things have really changed for the worse in the last four years. Um, to Times Square to St. Louis in 16 hours. Oh, that sounds like fun. <laughs> What'd you do that in? Uh, People drove like they were strapped. Yeah, that's that's where the baby seat should go on the front bumper. <laughs> you know, people would be careful. Uh, 1060 West <laughs> asked him, said, let's see, what do they do with Mexican? What do they do with Mexican plated cars? Oh, I don't know. I, I have no idea how they deal with that. Uh, I should put Mexican plates on my car next time I go over there. Uh, tire pressure sensors are, are fine until you can't shut off the system the batteries and the wheels don't. yeah right now our jeep right now is a permanent permanent light on because bad sensor and I couldn't fix it actually it was the valve that was bad and when I replaced the valve of course then it doesn't have a sensor so it stays on and now I gotta go dismount the tire and buy a sensor and all that to make it work uh, that just makes you buy new, uh, you need new valves, Dem. Yep. Uh, that's Wrigley Field. Yeah, put put that down as an address. The way I see it, the one side wants to drill for oil and use our oil and energy. The other side wants to push electric vehicles and equipment. And you know what? Both sides are using oil. 2018 backup cameras mandatory. Yeah, was that 18? I didn't know when that was. I had a car with backup camera. Which I kind of like, but I don't know, it should be mandatory. It wasn't mandatory in the car when I bought it. I just got an infotainment center that had it. Uh, I can actually check the pressure of my own tires. Yeah, and, I, and you know what I have in the side pocket of the cars is I have a tire pressure gauge. Kim, how long do you think the life of these are? Let's see, pings away. Well, you know, I was just talking to a friend that lives in Ohio where the rust, right in a rust belt up there, and it was like, how long do you think one of these cars is going to last? It has batteries down low, driving in the salt and the muck and the slush. Uh, you know, the new Tesla is about 800 volt system. And and the thing of it is, is it's salt, like salt water, an 800 volt system. That's like they fun. were talking a, a few months back about how a Rivian accident repair it was, it was just there. This stuff is so complicated that it's it's very much disposable. It's cheaper to buy a new one than to try and repair one that's damaged 
in a lot of different ways. If you've been in a, the wiring harness, there's a zillion little bitty wires. And once something goes wrong, it's trash. I was trying to fix, my Subaru is a 1999. And it has enough of those little gadgets and gizmos. It's lovely, lovely car, but I can't get the dash lights to work. And there is just, there's too many wires. It's too complicated. There's all these little circuits and gizmos. I just want to, 12 volts to the back of the cluster. I, I, I don't want it to dim when you close the door. Like just... Uh, a switch, <laughs> an on-off switch. That's one of the things I hate. You know, in the Valiant, you close the door and the light goes off. In my Mazda, you close the door and the light stays on. It slowly dims up. I don't need that. I don't want that. That's some stupidity. It, it raises the cost. It's courtesy. It raises the cost of everything. It's nice when it's new and everything works. But when stuff starts going, things become trash. And they do not care because they are not aiming for the regular practical person. They are looking at the buyer. And right now, the prices are supposedly coming down. But the prices of all the new vehicles, if you look at them, the only people who can buy them are businesses because they can write off the expense. They can write it off rapidly. Okay, so they're looking to sell cars to businesses because they don't care how much it costs because they just write off that I, expense. I want to six. Because they are under warranty, paying a mechanic $150 an hour, the mechanic doesn't get $150 an hour. Here, there's two things there. The shop might get $150 an hour. The mechanic gets a very small part of that. And, and warranty jobs, mechanics usually get half. So as soon as they're on a factory warranty job, the mechanic's making half their normal flat rate. And that really sucks. So why can't you keep mechanics around? Well, there's one reason. Scene 3 over you. Yeah, you ever watch a guy, uh, what's the guy's name, Eric, that I like to, Eric O'Brock, what's his channel? South Main Auto. South Main Auto. South Ooh. Main Auto channel. He's up in New York where they sell aggressively. He, he is right in the middle of the Rust Belt. And, and he works on a lot of cars that are, you know, eight or nine years old. They're already shot. But he's a guy that's, he's a smart dude. And he knows how, I watched him this morning with a Ford truck that was a, a 19, and it had a problem. A lot of stuff didn't work, electronic stuff. And it had gone back to a dealer. I think it was a dealer, somebody. On warranty, they replaced uh, one of the modules. It was an $800 module. It still had all the same problems. Then it came to Eric. And he went back, found some pinch wires in the back, back by the spare tire, fixed the pinch wires. So somebody charged the customer $800 plus the labor to replace a module that didn't need to be replaced. And then Eric fixed it by soldering some wires with some shrink tube over. Uh, I swear. The customer's paying that rate. Eric oh, yeah, the a genius, right. I agree. Yeah. He's pretty, but he's in it all the time, okay, working on it. Honestly, the theater dimming lights is pretty easy and cheap. Yeah, but why have that? Just use an anti, oh yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Five, 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 five times. Easy and cheap. But, I have to take out the entire center console. It's like 30 screws. No, it's not. It's like 10 screws. I got to take off all the plastic covering and the clips and stuff like that. Take the screws, take the radio out, take the heating uh, controls. They got to go out of the way and back behind. That's where they mount it, right? And I don't even know if it's bad. I have no idea how to test it. I don't know why it's not well, working right. He, he's saying something here about the processor, and it could be even be done. It's cheap and easy and all that. You know, you know that's how cheap, it all starts. You know what's cheap, cheap, and cheap and easy? You know what's cheap and easy? A toggle switch. Lights on, lights off. I mean, that's really, what I want. Why can't that's we buy a base model why vehicle should, anymore? Why should, I have, why should I have a processor somewhere in the loop that turns my interior lights on and off? I just, just want to rip that out of the car and stomp on it. They make cars for rental Art. companies who write off the losses on those vehicles right away on their taxes. Oh, yeah. the cheap, yeah, Well, 2016 to 2020. Yeah, I was out West Texas. That was a going place. And after 2020, I drove through there. It was like a ghost town. All those refineries, all those oil wells, everything just shut down. So, yeah, we know what the problem is. But the... Um, the uh, yeah. Oh, Eric O is a genius. I, I missed that. I, I'm trying to catch up here, Kim. 
I know. I work at Chrysler dealership. Oh, yeah, Turbo Tom. Yeah, he has, like, the oldest car at No Name Nationals. He works on the newest cars there are. Uh, gas is cheaper. COVID, nobody driving. Uh, a lot of problems with our low quality parts. And I remember in 2020, a gas here was a buck fifty one a gallon. And within uh, a couple months, it was uh, three bucks. Uh, a lot of problems with low quality parts because a lot is coming from China and other countries. Oh man, I can't keep up with this. Hard to get good parts. Sh I'm going to skip some stuff here. Uh, can I get parts for old of a car. There's another problem getting good parts in the parts department. Yeah, when these modules start to fail and the car is like 15 or 16 or 17 years old and you can't get those modules, then what? Try to restore that. Need to keep everything in our country like it was years ago when people took pride in quality because buff, that saves labor installing switches. <laughs> really? Uh, you know, my car has switches and the, there are switches and it has stuff that's between the switches and the battery. Uh, come to Mexico, base models are sold. They're all manufactured. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, keep it simple, stupid. Well, that's why I have older cars. And that's why I want more older cars. I want to find a God that, you know, the next one I want to do is that Spitfire. Because it's, uh, I was just saying it's easy and cheap until you get engineers involved. Hey, hey, I resemble that remark. The Engineers have to justify the their own existence by changing things simple, every model year. The simple, then, part, the simple part is a 50 cent piece. It should be that easy. They need to keep their jobs. Uh, and that's what I say a lot of times is when engineers change something. Why don't you change it? It was working fine. And I say this especially to software engineers. It's, you know, uh, you, ju you just got to justify your existence by changing stuff. And yeah. when something works real well, why mess with it? But they do. And everything is made so that it's model specific. So you cannot pull the parts off of the next year or the previous year. What's what was you were telling that story about the radio in your car? The car won't even run without the right oh, radio. Yeah, I, a lot of cars are like that. That's and insanity. Right. Also, Trump's tariffs only screwed up. The part. Okay, I'm not going to go into. I'm not going to go into uh, okay. who who's who in politics. Kim, um, or okay. Mexican spec. I'm Kim. Um. <laughs> My Chevy Sonic, beautiful little car, but every freaking gadget you can imagine. Well, it was, in, a, it was a 2015. It was an electronic car. Yep, and in a couple of years, I cannot even imagine the crash of, of like, uh, what's it called when everything just goes to crap all at once because of the A and all the wiring problems and the. It just won't be worth fixing. Like, it won't have... It's a disposable thing. It's like when your refrigerator stops working, you go buy another refrigerator. You don't fix it. And that's how they design... And they intentionally do that. They don't want cars to be around for 20, 30 years anymore. They don't want still it. produced here in America. All my family is blue collar and took pride in what they did. Yeah. I mean, let's face it. That's what... People that are on this channel, that's what we do. We, uh, yeah, we're, we're fixing our own stuff. You know, a lot of times, Most Kim and I need know. something, and it's either going to be from junkyard, or we put a piece of metal in the vise and start cutting and hammering and heating and welding and make the part. And that's eh, what we do, you know. Uh, can't even change a PCM. It requires you have to program it to match the VIN, yeah. By that law in some states. Well, you know, there's a front... Uh -oh. Sorry, that's me. There's You're a front, leaning on the table. There's a... Okay. Um, there's a friend of mine in Arizona that makes big speakers that the ones you can hear like two blocks away that vibrate stuff off the shelves of the grocery store. Those speakers. And he's got a little uh, a Mini Cooper. And it vibrates the hell out of it. But his radio that he has, he doesn't use the stock radio. Of course. He uses something else. That car won't run without the stock radio. So he's removed it from the dash. He's put it up behind, zip-tied it all up in there because the car won't run without the radio. So that radio has to stay in the system for the car to run. And that, I hate stuff. I just hate stuff. But like you know that. what, Mexican spec? Some of the problem is, is people are losing that technology. They don't know how to deal with things that are, are manual or analog. And... Consumers are demanding this garbage. People are people are like, um, they're they're falling for the hype, 
for all this electronic gizmos and stuff like that, they're just like, they think it must be great because everybody says it's great. And then they buy it. And then three years down the road or not even how many people have we seen on the internet saying, I bought this electric car and I really regret it, but they thought it was going to be so great. And yeah. they had no idea that they were going to have charging problems. They were going to have range problems. They were going to have electrical problems. They were going to have warranty problems. It's all there. It, but you can't tell these people. They go and they spend their money. They go and spend way more money. They spend 10 years of disposable income on a vehicle that's really only designed to last till the end of the warranty, three or four years. Oh, if that. And then they are financially obligated to finish paying for that vehicle, even though they can't even sell it. Oh, drab. Ha ha, Studi Packard. Yeah, the ones we call it. Packard Bakers. Uh, you might be seeing quite a few Mexican Dodge trucks in the US pretty soon. I just got a new client. Oh, really? Kay Nelson. Hello. All cars marketed today are out of the reach of tipping. That's exactly right. Unless you have uh, somehow to borrow the money to get it and somehow maybe make the payments. And most people I, I don't know, people I know don't have that kind of money. You know, $100,000 trucks. The analog stuff is intuitive. Kim, the old cars will always be able to be fixed. Yep, well, that's her. She fixes that stuff. Uh, when my friend was shopping for cars, all the sales kids even knew about this, which had CarPlay, even the whole vehicle would be useless without a locking dip. I'm not sure what all that is. Okay, Jay Leno has a good point. If Hans made the part 100 years ago, Hans can make it again. Yep, and we do that stuff. Well, we do it all the time. But I mean, now, we always do that stuff. But the problem is, is we know how to do that stuff. But you cannot oh. get anybody else to do that kind of repairs. They they don't want to. Well, you know what? They want to make, like, they want to do this other stuff. They want to sell you parts. They just want to do parts swapping. And the problem with parts swapping is the new parts are garbage. Yeah. And they're not serviceable. You've heard me say this a lot. The new young engineers, you can get them to, you can give them, let's say, a, a wing spar for an airplane, and they'll tell you how it's going to behave, when it's going to break, where it's going to break. They know, but they have no imagination. They don't know how to design something new. They don't know how to pull something new out of their brain and use their head and, and, and design it. Just none of them can. And I'm, I don't know what's going to happen, you know. Uh, all the uh, engines have been overhead cams, so they ditched the 3800. Because, yeah, 3800 is a great engine. Okay, this comes up sometimes, a 3.8 and a 3800. So I've heard the 3800 is the front drive and the 3.8 is the rear drive. I don't know. They're both kind of the same engine. They have different bell housing bolt patterns, I guess. Stupid 5 to 10 small computers knowing they're going to crap out sooner or later. Cars become computers on wheels. Yeah, that's what I always say. They're rolling robots. I mean, auto manufacturers manufacture cars. Their interest is in selling more cars. So whatever they can hype to the consumer to sell, that's what they, they, they build this stuff, they hype it up, and they pump it out. But there's Apple. no Apple car, please. concern Apple. about like reliability or brand loyalty anymore. It's just not there. Apple CarPlay is how to connect an iPhone music to the stereo. My, my oldest son really likes CarPlay, and every car he has has CarPlay. But you know what? It's also a way for Apple to know everything you do, I guess. I mean, they're spying well, on you anyways. Uh, Honestly, at some point, there's so much redundancy to the spying, it's absurd. Waylon, is it Berger? Or, how do you pronounce your last name? Berger? Buger? <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to pronounce it wrong. I like old school, simple to work on crank windows. My Jeep, the 08 Jeep has the nicest crank windows I ever had. Manual everything. Yeah, I always laugh. The Jeep, you got to go out there with a key like 1956 all over again. Unlock the door, push buttons, crank windows. It's kind of, but it's still an electronic car when it comes to the engine. Simple equals more reliability and cheaper repairs like engine mounted fuel pumps to electric fuel pumps in the tank. Yeah, I've had to pull a lot of those out. Oh, my God. To be gosh. fair, I have had quite a few strip manual window regulators. Yeah, I've had strip uh, power window regulators. Ford vans are bad for that. 3.8 and 3,800 are very different. You have to go to Wikipedia. Uh, Wikipedia. Wikipedia usually give me some good information, but they also give references so you can find all the good information. Uh, so, uh, 
uh, even fire hot fire balance shaft. Oh, okay, so that's what all the differences are. Because I've had both. And I've had the three point, I've had more 3.3s, which are like a 3.8. You know, they're rear drivers. It's a Dodge Brotherhood. A rear thing. What is a Dodge Brotherhood? I don't know. Um, functional pickup truck to actually drive on. Doesn't matter what the Bluetooth does if the vehicle isn't fit for purpose. Uh, and so. and the problem is is if the Bluetooth goes out more and more, the car becomes disabled if any of these things start to malfunction. Okay. The video is completely disabled. I don't want to research the difference between a th three point eight and a thirty to eight hundred right now. Because okay. that's probably gonna be more than I we wanted. should probably not that's spend the whole time talking about our conspiracies. Okay, okay. But the, the, I was going to ask you to change. I have a lot of old cars, trucks from 60 to 70. Never had a window regular fail on me yet, but it can happen. You know what? They fail on the, on the A-body Chrysler products. There's a little plastic thing in there that goes on the, on the thing that moves the thing up and down. The thing with the thing with the thing. So, yeah, eventually so, it fails. So those things fail. But Kim and I looked at ours, and we go, man, I'm not going to be able to get that little plastic thing. And I got looking at it, and it was pretty easy to take a bolt and, and use some Loctite and a lock bolt and make a thing, and it works perfectly out of stuff we had. And I think I used a piece of, what I use, a little piece of uh, Delrin or something to cushion yeah. a little bit. It worked perfectly. So we fixed it. And now the 72 Valiant crank the window up crank the window down it's perfect and you know what now it doesn't have a little plastic gizmo in it that came from chrysler 50 years ago that broke after 50 years so my feeling is the new one will probably last 100 years might be all left after 100 years the window regulator so the uh the one i've had fail the regulators the ford vans they uh it's a electric thing with a bunch of cables and stuff in the little swedge comes off the end of the cable and the window goes wham down in like a half a second. Oh yes, the plastic things too. Yeah, you know what? I expect those plastic things, if you look at it, it's pretty easy to figure out how to make something. And if you don't know how to do it, I'll just take a picture of what we did and send it to you and you, you can just copy it. And it'll be, uh, uh, let's see, you know about the news to is when the check engine light is turned on, it disables the air conditioner. How's that for me? You go back to the other. You know what? Push the thing off the side. It <laughs> light it on fire. <laughs> I've had to replace things like whatever makes, like, with whatever things made out of things. Made. If you drive with the yellow glow, you don't deserve air. Let's see. Have you had problems? Yeah, you know, Mexico is hot down there. You guys don't have any cars with air. Have you problems with the tip them on your Patriot common Jeep? You know, I haven't. What we have had problems with on the Jeep was the uh, the wheel speed sensor on the right rear, which put us into a, like a limp mode. I couldn't go over 20 miles an hour. That sucks. Yeah, and then and we then, had a problem with the and then drop the, our throttle mechanism, whatever and, that's called. And then the, um, uh, what's the thing down there? The throttle body, you thought it was dirty, cleaned it up, but it wasn't it was uh, gears little plastic gears in there so we had to put a new uh, throttle body on it and I think that's all we had for the running of it but you know how long, how long is it going to last I don't know it's an 08 so it's 180,000 miles on it so call the engineers of my workplace are less capable of solving problems in my 63 old, than my 63 year career in production can they have no practical experience yeah i've run into that i run into that a lot um the uh young engineers we had at uh defense contractor where i worked there was one one young guy who was just exceptionally good and you know why he was he grew up on a farm so when he was a kid he learned to weld he learned to fix machinery he learned his father told, taught him how to keep the farm going. Then he went to school and became an engineer. That guy was that guy was a great engineer. The rest of them were. And that is why we need we cannot outlaw old cars. Uh, we can't. We need people stuff. who are. Engineer International. 
experience with working on them from a young age. So families of people that do racing and hot rodding and their kids or neighbors or other people who are interested, like foster that community. So people, cause otherwise we start going backwards. We start going backwards cause there's nobody to actually do the work <laughs> that needs done. Maybe they make air subscription service. Yeah. That's, yeah subscriptions. If I gotta have a car, was a part of it's a subscription? Nope. <laughs> Waylon, you're you're right. People who don't understand, they just whoop on. They just abuse everything because they have no respect for the fact that this is a huge, huge machine, very complicated and intricate, and you don't just pound on it because it's not doing what you want this second. No patience, no respect for things. Waylon, where are you? Somewhere where it's really cold in the winter. I I lived in Northeast Ohio for 15 years, and I had enough frozen. My whole life was frozen. I was so tired of that place. Yeah, I'd chisel my car out of the ice in the morning and work on doing a brake job on the back of a car in a blinding snowstorm. And Oh, man. Yeah, I had a Ford Taurus in the left rear Oh, a uh, wheel cylinder going all over. And I, I was out there with a jack in the snow, you know, a piece of wood in the snow, jacking the car up, taking the wheel off, fixing the wheel cylinder. No fun. Former wife, teach her how to pump the brakes so we could bleed it. <laughs> Just, I had enough of that kind of stuff. Common problem with OE Jeep is auxiliary relay box. Yes, I don't know. I don't even know anything about that. You know, China produces more engineers a year than America has and totally have. But, but are they good? I, are they any good? I think I think Americans, like our age, you know, people of 50, 60, 70, 80, you know, we had imagination. So I don't know what's going to happen that you know, the baby boomer imagination goes away. I mean, there's... Because if you're going to be a good engineer and design stuff, you got to have a good... you got to have good imagination. I think a Chinese... They copy a lot of stuff, and they probably make a lot of good stuff, but eh, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to have the, the imagination. Of course, computer, people in computers, computerized stuff have imagination. Uh, all future movies have blobs that are understanding the screen, except for the hero car, which is an old car. <laughs> yeah, it's been out there. It'll never happen. Millions are still around if you go accounting for them. Yes, plastic isn't good. I think most of my older stuff is mostly made out of metal or aluminum. Isn't aluminum a metal? Metal or aluminum. Plus, I don't get forceful of things when it's frozen. I take my time. Man, I, you know, a lot of stuff, it's with me, WD-40 or, or what's that red stuff I like? Marble mystery oil or things to get stuff working again and then take it apart. And she's more into that than I am. I usually, once I get it working, it's good enough. Kim won't do that. She'll disassemble it, clean everything perfect, and lube it properly and put it all back together, which I kind of like because she's more, uh, a lot more, uh, what? A lot more careful with stuff like that. Maybe. Mexican spec, the insurance companies are now uh, charging more money. People are going to have to get higher deductibles. So if they mess up their car, they're responsible for a larger portion of it. And um, ins people are going to have to start giving up some control of their driving habits. The car will only go so fast. The car will only accelerate so quickly because the insurance company says so. And if they want, you know, if they, because the insurance company can see everything they do and they're, it's going to hurt their policy if they operate their vehicle outside of those. Um, right. Meticulous is the word. She's a lot more meticulous. Than sometimes I am. I'll get into I, things. Yeah. I'm, I'm more into the, I don't know. I'm a structural engineer. <clears throat> Aerodynamicist. That's where my stuff was. The, uh, like you'll take a little old mechanical clock apart and it'll be perfect when you're done and i look at something like that and go yeah. <laughs> but if i look at some big thing like a car frame i'll go up there and fix and cut and weld and make something good out of it again you know i don't know we're just we're a little different there 
I'm way up in northeast Ohio. It's been cold and nasty here for the last few days. It's been cold and nasty here, too. It got down to 50, I think. <laughs> what did it, it was get? 36 last night. 36 last night? Okay, but that was during the night. Yeah, I, I don't miss the I don't miss the northern Midwest or the northeast Ohio. I do like the warmer uh, weather here, I gotta say. I was out in the garage earlier today trying to get an old floor jack working. I see how it turns out. See how it turns out in the coming days. Oh yeah, we have we have a couple of floor jacks that need some service. <clears throat> yes, Kim, and that will add to the end. Who will buy a second hand yeah, second hand electric car? Man. Yeah, what's a 10-year-old electric car going to be like? Worthless. I mean, a 2-year-old electric car might be worthless. I don't know. Dunk it in oil. Yeah, that's what I do. Dunk stuff in oil. Kim, you, oh, what is that picture you put up there? I didn't even see that. Kim, what'd you put up there? Some truck. I don't know what that's all about. What is that truck all about? Oh, I don't know. We were just talking about vehicles that weren't up to the task. Mexican spec... Home insurance may change more if you own an AV. Uh, stick it to... Yeah. Especially if you keep your car in the garage and burn the whole house down. Um, um, I have a 74 International Lodestar rollback with a winch. Oh, a 74. With a winch that I haul out of my stuff with. I... Simple and reliable. How are the carburetor points? Because what's it have in it? Is it like a 392 or something? Those are great engines. I don't know what you have in that. You might have diesel or something. Uh, I like those big old international uh, V8s. My sister had... Actually, my sister had a couple of... Uh, Them are good vehicles. International uh, Scouts when she was like in college. <clears throat> she had one and then she had another one. And both of them had those four-cylinder, it's like half of a 392 or half of whatever they were. So like 74 look a lot different than that, or is that close enough? Not second, second electric car. Oh, about a second electric car if they've had one. Yeah, they, they're going to go buy a gas-powered car cause they, so they can go somewhere. Yeah, they're going to learn their lesson, but they're going to suffer for a long time trying to catch, to recover good from night, the people. bad good financial job. decision. Good job, thanks. Take care, Dizzy Izzy. Good night, Dizzy. Thanks for being here. Let's start with a 392. That was a classic combination back when. Yeah, you know the, the car I always wanted to put a 392 in was a checkered cab. I think that would be the beefiest, nicest car you could have. <laughs> big, beefy car with a big, beefy engine in it. Man, yeah, 392. I worked on a lot of those uh, when I had the radiator shops. Uh, not that they had a lot of problems. They were just around, and I serviced the cooling systems. I know I rebuilt a couple of those radiators, but mostly I just in for service, you know, uh, flush the system, put in the coolant, check the thermostat, that kind of thing. Uh, five speed likes its gas. Yeah, they were not easy on gas. I know they weren't easy on gas. Um, I had a friend next door, my second radiator shop. The guy next door to me had tow trucks, and they were all internationals. We used to kid him, call them corn binders, you know, but they were. Internationals with uh, 392s. Uh, California change. 23, the public will... Yeah, I mean, how can they? Nobody can afford that stuff. And the, the infrastructure isn't there. And the real joke is that it there'll be no oil being used. Well, California, is, they won't have any nuclear power plants after uh, Diablo Canyon closes, which is coming right up. And so, you know, where, where are they going to get their, how are they going to charge all these cars? And the whole thing is just such a farce. And of course they're going to use oil to make electricity. It just moves the problem over there. Now there's the inefficiency of moving the electricity around. I don't know, we all know these problems. Uh, let's um, see. I, wait, wait, I missed so something. Many checkers were around and now they're, Well, they're yeah. still building them. They put the mileage on those suckers. What was the last checker? 82, I think? Yeah. yeah. 40 years ago, 42 years ago. Somebody said some, oh, Mexican spec said meticulous, but ain't nobody got time for that. Right. Well, Everybody's does. running around chasing their tail. They got a, I always say, maybe I shouldn't, but roofers, right? They got a, 
work real fast, get this roof done, so they can buy more cocaine, so See, they can... Come on. So do more roofs. I help... My, what are, for what purpose? Why are we in such a hurry? Where are we going? My hood tilts down towards the front. I also have international uh, trucks with the butterfly hoods. Like you, and I remember them both. Um, man, I worked on... A, I'll tell you what I worked a lot on was the pickups and the travel alls. There were people, before the SUVs were a big deal, somebody that wanted a vehicle like that bought a travel all or a Chevy uh, Suburban. But there are a lot of travel alls around. Oh, you can't change it. Yeah, right there, people were worried about grid capacity outlaw crypto. Once you got in the grid, it's like 40% of the consumption here. 40%? Yeah, I, I didn't doubt it. Uh, what do you think of UTG's love for XJs? Oh, I don't know. It's just a car he started liking. Um, I really like an XJ. They're, it's a nice <clears> vehicle. Well, you can't to... really argue with them that they're a pretty nice little vehicle. Yeah. I rode one of his once. I don't know. I, I never really had anything for him. But then, I don't know. They're okay. Would you uh, rather have... A, same, same condition. Would you rather have an XJ or the Liberty? Oh, the Liberty's a piece of crap. The Liberty. No, you the Liberty, love the Liberty. You I like driving. Liberty. I like driving it, but I, right. I know one day it's gonna stop, and I'm gonna go, Ugh. and you're gonna be out there with the computer, you know, with the plugged into the OBD2, finding the problem, and I'm worried about one day that transmission takes a shit, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know. The the. I like driving that. The the. Uh, it's not a Liberty. It's a. Uh, it's a Patriot. Isn't that a Patriot I have? It's a fake Jeep. It's got the engine like a caliber does. It's got a 2.4. 2.4, yeah. It's a good little vehicle for what it's for, but a, an XJ is a much more capable vehicle for yeah, like of off road. And it doesn't, that um, Liberty doesn't have a, a tow hook at all. Because with the CVT transmission, they don't want you to tow. I don't think it. Right? You're not supposed to tow with that. Oh, you could tow like a 300-pound trailer. It's like having a fat person in the back seat, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but it's not meant for towing. No, it's not meant for towing. I think Tony, he's going to tow a big trailer with that. He went out and towed it. He says it's okay. I don't know. It shouldn't hurt it. I mean, no, it should be okay. it just seems okay. like a light vehicle. To tow well, he's big. putting trailer brakes on, so it should be fine for braking. And um, it's got, isn't it a V8? Or is it no, an it's an inline. Six? It's a four point oh six. That's a pretty good set. My van's a four point two. It tows the snot I don't want out of XJs stuff. XJs to be comfortable. You know, I rode in one of his one day. We, Tony and I went out and got something to eat. We were uh, rode in it. I don't know. It seemed okay, but yeah, I've never driven them. <clears throat> I may have. I don't know, but uh, I can't think any time I've driven one any distance. But an XJ is rough around the edges, so there's that sacrifice. The, the, uh, avoid CVTs, except maybe must if you must. You know, I had a CVT in a Dodge Caliber, and at 108,000 miles, the there's a transmission overheating light would start coming on. I was in Arizona, and it was summertime, 100, 120 degrees every day, and I took it to the dealer. And the woman at the, the uh, whatever she is, the service manager, she says, uh, they, they looked at it and they said it needs a, a new transmission. And they said, well, it, between the parts and the labor, this is several years ago, it was uh, $4,100. And this is probably like in, this might have been 10 years ago, $4,100 10 years ago. And I was like, oh, I think I'm just going to drive it with a red light on. And then she goes, wait a minute, you have a, a warranty on that. And she says, uh, it's a $100 deductible. She goes, we'll put the transmission in for 100 bucks. Have at it. They were close to the airport. I walked up to the airport, rented a car. Four days later, I went back there and picked it up, $100. And I drove it. That car went to $150,000, 150 thousand miles. And my youngest kid wrecked it. So I don't know how long it would have gone. This car has a CVT, this uh, Jeep. And I just worry one day it's going to take a crap and I'll have to pay for it. So, I don't know. Or Kim and I will take it apart and figure out how to fix it. 
seat too close to the floor for me and an XJ. You know, I don't I don't know. Don't know. Haven't been in that much. Put a small I guess there's two major C V T suppliers. One of them is just a couple of Japanese brands, I guess. Yeah, I, I don't know much. Fiberglass, fiberglass. What's fiberglass? Iceman saying fiberglass. Fiberglass. Not sure. I think a tailgate or something. Cherokee on the lot in the rear fiberglass door was damaged. It bothered me. The driving position was behind the B pillar. Man, how tall are you? Also, the windows are too small to put my arm up. Yeah, yeah, you put your arm up on the window like this. Uh, I put, personally, I put almost 100,000 miles on a caliber. And it's probably about 90 that I put on it. And I like that thing. Uh, it was... Uh, I don't know. It got, I drove it back and forth from Tennessee to uh, Arizona and from Tennessee to Maryland a lot. Lots of long distance driving. Sit there with a the cruise control on, just pointed down the road, and 33 miles a gallon, which is not bad. And there's a first and a second gen. Uh, and the only way I can tell the difference looking at them is the uh, instrument panel is on the second gen is different. And the second gen, uh, there's a second gen. Those two insert panels are second gens. That's the second gen right there. Uh, yeah, that's the second generation. And the other one had kind of a curved panel. I like that one better, but that's, maybe that's just because I had it. Yeah, there's a first gen down below, below that one. The center one down below, no, over on the right. Right there, that's a first gen instrument panel. And my former wife had one of those. And then I had, actually she had the second gen and then I had a second gen. So, I don't know, they were okay, I guess. Uh, let's see here, I, uh, I sat in a caliber one, okay. I had that, yeah, the rear tailgate is fiberglass. On what? What's fiberglass? Which tailgate? Um, um, fancy thing about fiberglass tailgates, my Bronco, my 85 Bronco has fiberglass tailgate as well. See, uh, try riding in an H2. How a big interior could be so claustrophobic. Yeah, I always wanted, I always wanted to drive an H3 because it looks like it's got a chop top and I just wonder what it'd be like with those little windows. The H3 looks like just, it's a cool looking thing, but I always want to know what it was like to drive it. Not that I'd want one. I like to have a window down in my uh, warm, warm vertical, not possible. Okay. Yeah. I, I had an HHR for a while. It was a rental. Yeah, it was a mini lease. I had an HHR for a while. I liked it. But uh, I liked it. I had a PT Cruiser. I think I liked the HHR better than a PT Cruiser, but I'm not sure. It was just one of those things. The tailgate of my girl's XJ is steel. Maybe the air miles are far less. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of stayed away. <laughs> I don't know, Mexican spec, if that was a cost thing or if that was a weight reduction thing. I, I don't know. That's weird that they did that. Well, some things that people think are fiberglass is actually fi uh, plastic that's mashed in some kind of mold, some fiber material. Like the hood on the... I don't know how your Ford van is. Mine is a fibrous stuff that's not fiberglass. But it's like a molded... Yeah, mine's like plastic. Yeah, and mine, when I got it, somebody had driven into some, poked a big hole in it, like they drove into a pole that had fallen over or something. And I fixed it with fiberglass. So they're compatible with each other. But I used epoxy fiberglass and, uh, and fixed mine and then painted it with a spray can of uh, Duplicolor. Matches perfectly. Yeah. Caliber was, was okay. I know a lot of people didn't like it. The, all the old Mopar guys didn't like them. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Tony with the Jeeps. You know, I, sh I certainly like the old Mopars better. I like simpler cars. Basically, last half of the 50s, all the way through the 60s and first part of the 70s. Not many 80 cars. Hiccups again. Not many 80s cars I like. You know what, I, I, um, I think the, the XJs are easy to like. They're really plentiful around here. And they're, like, I think they're easy to get in a way that they're not. What happened? 
I said something, or you I didn't say anything. You said something that made the screen go nuts. Said something. Okay. We have one screen up here. It's voice activated. It's, you can't it has some it kind of voice activated thing, and if you say the right word, it recognizes it and changes everything. Caleb took over for the neon. Yeah, the uh, Caleb, I think, took over the PT Cruiser, really. I think they overlapped a little. The PT Cruiser was neon stuff underneath, except the rear suspension on the on the uh, PT Cruiser was better. It had a, um, what do they call that? The, uh, uh, shit, I should know the name of that. Had a, the suspension was much better in the back of the, you know, what are you looking at? What that's, is, um, oh, cross box. I didn't read, that's something that we don't get here. Why do you guys get all the cool stuff? It probably yeah. doesn't meet crash or pollution standards here. Or they in the just United didn't States. mean they just didn't go crash test it. Wouldn't close. So I get I got in there to figure it out. One of the screws had fallen out. I couldn't complain about that. It's been on the road for twenty five years. Yeah, look at the car I really like in Mexico is the the one we can't get here is the Ford Ka. Man, I like those. Look up the purple XJ, Kim. That's what my girlfriend has. What's a purple? I mean, I understand that she has a, a purple one, but I don't think... That's an older one. I had the 20... Oh, you had a 2011. Man, I, that's a cool-looking car. A purple one. That? Is there actually one called a purple? I don't know. Apple used to do that. They used to make computers that were designated by their different colors. Well, and the, um, I'm oh, sorry. So Hit me while I'm taking a drink. The Tesla is called a plaid, so I mean, sometimes they name vehicles after their color. You know, the Tesla S, that's a fun car for a few minutes, but to own one and have to deal with charging and all the, yeah, no, I don't want to do that. And it's heavy. 6,000 pound car. Man, I mean, what happened to being, being, uh, light and, and, Efficient. Six thousand. It still takes power to move that down the road. You know. Bought a new one. I have it. You bought a new car. Owner's manual said to let the hood drop. This one says it's Not to, rare is, purple, one of a kind. What is that? Oh. Hmm. It's not factory. Hers is dark shade of purple. Oh. Like that? Yeah, I like the looks of those things. They drive okay, I guess. I just not my, just not my thing. I much I would rather, love I much an rather have a capable like, one, I but I don't want to buy one because then I don't want to be like being like Tony kind of connotation. So ameth amethyst pearl coat. So now you have to type that in. Oh man! Oh yeah, like that. He says it's like that, like that. Um, Pretty. Yeah, yeah well, you problem. all think I'm trying to be like Tony if I get an XJ? I want to make something that's off-road capable, four-wheel drive. I, I know I, Tony likes those. He's comfortable with them. He likes driving them. And right now they're cheap. He Like that last one, he paid 800 bucks for it. You know, and you can't buy old Mopars or 60s or early 70s cars or 50s cars for 800 bucks. You know, people and want... you can't play around with them either because they have to stay factory or else you destroy the value. Cool. Kim, where'd you get those cool frames from? Are they ray bad? Oh, those, these. Those... These came from one of those online she, vision places. She wears those in the shop and around them normally because, you know, in a shop you got to have glasses on. But when she sits here, she usually puts her contacts in. So tonight we kind of came right from the yard to here. And she's got her glasses on. You think they're cool Ray-Bans. Oh, God, let's see where you are. Kim, can Tony, store, can Tony store some at your place? Kathy won't, <laughs> Kathy won't let him have any more. 
Oh, man. What's Kathy want? She knows something she wanted. No, Tony can't bring cars here. I'm not allowed to have any more cars, and Tony's not allowed to have any cars she's here. Got, she's got a... She filled my yard with cars. I got rid of one, and then that truck's get, getting ready to go. And I almost had the Subaru sold, and then the damn thing... I think I'm going to have to put another different cylinder head on that Subaru, because I think I seized the cam again, but I don't, I don't know. Bring a trailer. You ever look at uh, Cars and Bids? That's another one I watch. Because it was all, Cars and Bids was all like Ferraris and expensive Porsches and stuff. But now I'm noticing older cars on there that are uh, a lot less money. Yeah, that's Doug DeMiro's uh, thing. Uh, I should I should watch it. You know, the only thing, it's really crazy. I, I watch Cars and Bids occasionally, but not very often. But the one source for used cars that I always, always, always watch is Mexican Specs. Uh uh, uh, what is Twitter? that? N not Twitter, the other one. Uh, uh, Instagram account. And, man, I, there was... Instagram. He was talking about something. Yeah, I don't know. Doug does have stuff interesting sometimes, I think. Once in a while, there's an older car on there that's just like, ooh, look at that. Um, the, uh, and probably just because it turns up cheaper than I thought it would be. The, uh, you were talking about, talking to Mexican spec here, you were talking about uh, a Matador AMX, which I never knew about. And see, Instagram pushes that stuff through to me. But I noticed they're not pushing everything through. So last night, I went back and I looked for that. There's like half the cars you have up there haven't been pushed through to me. So I was looking at, looking at cars and looking at cars and looking at cars on Mexican Specs uh, um, Instagram, there was something on there I saw. It's like, man, do I like that car. I don't remember what it was now. But I did find the AMX 84 B100 carryall. It's getting interest. Well, I look at some years now, I'll put the like, and it'll be like, there'll be like 38 likes or something. Then I'll hit another and be like 150 likes. I go, yeah, somebody likes that. Yeah, and those uh, Ford B100 carryall. Aren't those the ones that are made in Mexico? They're pickups that are modified in Mexico? Or are they actually made in Mexico? I'm not sure. They're, uh, you guys have some interesting stuff there. You know, the one I was looking at was, uh, um, you know, a lot of the Fox Body Mustangs down there. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, is that pretty? A lot of the Fox Body oh, Mustangs that's, that's down big. there Thank you. have... Uh, the Mercury bulge out fenders that I really dislike. But once in a while I see one that's that's not like that. My favorite of the Fox Body Mustangs are the 83 and 4. I think it's one that has a wedge shaped grill in the front. The Bronco Suburban. Yeah. I'm not getting likes for Volkswagens. Van I post today is getting nothing. Wow. He had a Volkswagen on there. Oh, I know the Volkswagen I was just looking at. It was the one somebody converted it. It was a very new Volkswagen. Somebody put the little split window on it, little old turn signals up front, and made it look like a... They even put the dashboard from the old, uh, the ancient old Volkswagen in there. And Mexican Spec has one of those for sale. Well, I don't know how old that is. That may be gone. But you may have it. I don't know. Uh this one only has three doors, two on the right and one on the left, like Chevrolet did. Wow. And what year is that one? Oh. Uh, I don't know. 1980 is what I punched in. Okay. Mexican spec. Here's a 77 B250. I don't know. That's not the same. Can you it scroll looks enough kind of the to same. see it? We can't see it. Oh, you can't see it. How do I fix that? Yeah, somehow make it... Oh, there we go. Yeah. And a lot of them have those roof racks on them, which I guess was something they use a lot in Mexico. But I'd probably leave it on there. Maybe. I don't know. That one sets up kind of high. It's four-wheel drive, I think. It sure looks like four-wheel drive. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, interesting cars. You guys got a lot of cool stuff down there. They got... All the AMC stuff that's, is it VOM or VAM? I don't know how to pronounce it down there. I guess in Spanish it would be VOM. Or maybe it's VAM. I don't know. 
Um, I uh, I really like all the AMC stuff. It's hard to get now. Man. I'd love to have an old AMC. I'd love to have a Hornet. That one's from Columbia. We don't have any four. Oh, no, four by four trucks. Yeah, I know. It's VAM. But oh, how do it you does pronounce say it? Columbia over do you, here. Do you pronounce it VAM or do you pronounce it no, VAM no. or do you pronounce it BAM? Somehow, tell me how you pronounce it. Like V A M or. Or is it like a word? Uh, I know it's not AMC. There's another thing I like down there. The uh, what was the tailgates? Oh yeah, look at that. The tailgates on some of the Dodge trucks have something else on them. Don't remember what it was. I saw an '83 wagon sale in Mexico it had one year only the last year grill super rare yeah I gotta start the Argentinian anybody Chrysler's are super cold they have those in Mexico those I'm not sure it's Mexicanos okay so it's it's VAM I guess VAM Or you pronounce VAM like a word. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, it looks like it has slider windows in the back. It does, yeah. I don't know if I'd want one, you know, because... It's pretty. But it looks cool. It'd be a fun project. Oh, I know what I was looking at, Mexican spec. I know, I know, I know. Oh, in 83, Gremlins? Man, by 83, Gremlins were gone here. They were uh, spirits. They were uh, little fastback spirits. I have no idea. Uh, I know the car I saw on that you have for sale is the little... Uh, I, I guess it's a Ute. I'd call it a little baby El Camino. And it has a Chevy name on it, but obviously it's not. It's made by somebody else, and it's a uh, it's a little tiny, uh, like a U. Oh yeah, GT. That's eighty three. Uh, you know what? I didn't really seem to find. Oh no, anything. that says AMC. It'd be VAM. Look up VAM. V A M. V V A M. Uh, Gremlin. 149 Gremlins are sold in 83. That's like... 149? said 143. Oh, 149. I just picked up the three somehow. From... Okay, so Mexican spec. What is that car? Chevrolet. No name on it. It was based on a Corsa from Europe. You know, I was in Algodones, this place, border town, and I was... I was just walking through town oh there was a car he had there's a um, I was walking through town and there was one of those uh, Chevy's Corsa and it said Chevrolet on it or it had a Chevrolet emblem on it oh there you go and um, I thought what is that thing and then I saw one on your I think I saw more than one on your uh, your Instagram site that had uh, that had those courses. <laughs> it was such a cool little car. I'd love to have one of those, but I I'd, I'd rather have a uh, oh look at that. That's the, he had one of those up there too. That thing's like a a spirit limousine. <laughs> Ram. Ram. Uh, well, Ram. I've never Lerman. seen one of those. Lerma. Alerma. Yeah, there's the original Gremlin. I had one of those. I had a couple of those. Yeah, D Danny Voigt's here. He's coming in late. We're not going to be around much longer. 
We are really going here on the cars. Oh, look at that. Yeah. I don't like the big bumpers on the Gremlins. I like the little tiny bumpers on the Gremlins, but... Yeah. Um... Yeah, my Ooh, friend had one. Like, oh, bother me, people. 429 Ford. You've about had it, huh? No, 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 we're good. I'll be back in a minute. I and then, and then, I'm gonna, then I'm going to change the subject. Okay. After you're back. We're after still on I'm car. Back. Yeah, after you're back here. They made the two-door and the four-door Lerma. I like the four-door person. The Lerma is the what I call the gremlin, uh, or no, the spirit limousine. <laughs> Okay, so it's named after a city. Kim just went outside. I don't know what she's doing. Wow, T-Top's got to be rare on the Cordoba. Uh, unfinished product. 56 Powell Sport Wagon. Oh, that's not up there right now. But, oh, that's on the... Oh, that's on the... Uh, on the... Uh, what do you call it? The thumbnail. Yeah, it was a pal. Smaller bumpers on most any car looks better. Yeah, of course. Or no bumpers. You know, the new cars have these five mile an hour bumpers that don't even look like bumpers. They're just soft, cushy things that squish and they pop out. I got rear ended in, uh, <laughs> in uh, Yuma, Arizona. I was stopped at a red light. Car in front of me. I, I can't go anywhere. I look up in the mirror and there's a. Uh, Oh, uh, what do you call that thing? Uh, it was some little Honda, Honda Civic coming up behind me so fast. I know the guy can't stop. There's nowhere for me to go. There's a truck in front of me that's pulling a little trailer with a boat on it. The car's next to me. I'm just screwed. Wham! We get hit. And that, that little uh, Honda Civic was all crashed in in the front. And by the time we got done with the cop and everything, that car had popped back out. The paint was all crackly, but the shape of the car was bad. And the guy was... I was really pissed off the guy for going so fast behind me. And he says, well, well I'm delivering a pizza. <laughs> See, you're delivering a pizza. You're not driving an ambulance. When we left there, the cop shook his finger at the guy. This kid that was delivering, he's 18 years old. It was three days after his 18th birthday. You have to be 18 to deliver pizza in Arizona. So... He's three days into his new job. The cop goes like this in his face. He goes, I write more tickets to pizza delivery people than anybody else. And I'm going to be watching you. <laughs> That's what he told the kid. Uh, that was pretty good. Yeah, let's see. Change the subject. Kim, you bought this gizmo for a new project that we need to talk about. Okay, the new project. So this is just a simple part of it. Right, but this is a like a sound thing. It's a sound splitter. So you put uh, the audio out from your computer, and then you can uh, have multiple listeners. So he can wear headphones, I can wear headphones, and then we can talk to you. And that's the whole plan. This is just a little device I got. It was uh, not expensive on Amazon. Uh, but... Uh, some of you have seen uh, people like John Wilburn use uh, StreamYard, and we've been looking into that. And we're going to be able to do the same as what we do and send it to StreamYard. So you'll still get all this, but we'll also be able to have a guest uh, or multiple guests. I don't know. I think we want to start with one. I don't think we want to do that thing where we flood the screen with a whole bunch of people and try and... Uh, play referee and get everybody, but we'd like to start with maybe one guest at a time. Um, maybe for part of the stream, maybe not even for the whole stream, but for part of the stream. And uh, we have the technology, so that's going to be coming in future streams. And if there's anybody in particular that you'd want us to have on as a guest, or if you would want to be on as a guest, you need to get in touch with... Uh, this guy right here. Yeah, uh, just uh, <clears throat> Buff Del Campo at um, uh, gmail.com. And I think what we want to do. What is this? Iceman? Can you read that? So, um, <laughs> I 
<laughs> now it makes sense. Live room. He said live room. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, what's he want to see? I, I, so, I was like, so, on Tuesdays? <laughs> Who makes love on Tuesdays? We're only going to have the love room on Tuesdays. Live room makes more sense. It makes so much okay, more sense. So, Wow. So that we, was so we're like John Wilburn and these guys bring up guests. They have these blocks all over. What Kim and I are trying to do is make it so it looks like we're all sitting together with the pictures in the background. So we can still bring pictures up. We can bring pictures of the person's car up or whatever. But we want to do the lives, but a little differently. But so the person's sitting there with us. And uh yeah, correct is killing me. Man, Man, it was really I I had, mind if it's I had effect. one that was so bad at work, I ha I can't even say what it was. It was the, it was as bad as that, but it was at work, so it was worse. And it was, we all had to have text. And at work, we used text to text each other. And my text autocorrected something that was as bad as that. Racially dysfunctional. It was horrible. Don't even bring it up. It was horrible. Real bad. It was horrible. It was not his fault. And it was like a text that went to a lot of people. Oh my God. But nobody ever said a word about it. And I corrected it as quickly as you can correct something like that. But man, it's bad. Freaking auto correct stuff. So anyway, get a hold of me. We'd like I, I hope we can do this within a week. Have um uh, <laughs> Love room sounds more exciting. I mean, I was, I was, like, I was looking at that thing. What's he want us to do? <laughs> I was like, I don't even know how I can make that bit interesting. I don't know. What do I got? What do I got? Oh man. So, uh, <laughs> so, so you did get to see. Were you here? Not here, Icewind, when we were showing the soldering. You got to see our green screen and stuff like that. Oh, she. I can show you. Wait she here. Think you can go back and look at the look at I it. I can get. I get the magic. I can make the magic go away. She expects expects the guests will be looking over your shoulders, so don't wear anything we're leaving. No, they'll be at home. Oh, what is this? Oh, that's a green screen that's already behind. There us. we are. Come on, Kim. That's why, I, that's why I have so many shirts that have green. They're camo and they're <laughs> green shirts. I can't wear any of them. So I keep wearing the same shirts. That, uh, oh, yeah, there's the, there's the thumbnail. Those things were in Southern California. They made them for two years. I used to see them around when I was young, but not a lot of them. But I'd see them around now, of course. They're, geez, no, no. I mean, there's like a cult of people that have them. So you, there's few of them around somewhere. I think it looks like it should be a miniature pedal car. A little kid sitting in there. Oh, yeah. He's, yeah, I just saw a solder. So, us. No, you were solder. So, um, yeah, she dragged all that stuff in here and did a... We we have one, two, three, four, five oh, screens. Get, yeah. Take that camera. All right, all right. And, and point it around okay okay here you go you get the it's exclusive since you asked okay here we go we got the green screen behind us oh plus there's lots of lights okay there's the front door because we use the living room this is this here is my screen where i can that's toggle right between of, that's right in front of kim yeah i can toggle between the different uh oh oh don't don't i don't know what i'm doing here yeah, okay and that's then her computer right there that's the one that's the one that has the powell on it the red powell is one that I can I can put pictures up there and then we can she can swap them up onto the main thing and then go up to the main the main one the main big computer screen right there that's what we see what's actually going on and then go to the go to the left a little bit that's the chat that's a 55 inch TV on its upended and then you see our cameras right there we try and put it right between the TV um, so it's not in our the, face yeah that little thing that looks like a like an alien that's on a stock really... it looks like an alien on a stock that's our camera yeah and i then, took and then... the webcam out of the housing so it's as, as and, and minimal then... there's our microphone and then my computer's over here with that has um stuff on it but right there i've got so it with open. that computer he has a keyboard and a mouse and that controls that screen over there oh, and so. then the and then the microphone the little microphones here yeah the so that's our setup it is pretty complicated we we, we 
so. I've put a lot of time and energy into uh, into making it all work, and it is it takes up an entire room of our house very much. So, I mean, this is a living room, but we don't we don't use the living room for anything but this. So it's kind of cool. This is what we have, and we wouldn't use it for anything else. Everything we own is junk. That the chat two is huge. big TVs are are older models that no one was using and like you would think oh he paid a thousand dollars for tv these tvs were only what 200 250 dollars new and they've been sitting here not getting used for five years so it's going to get better he says that's uh impressive it's going to get better i wear my close-up glasses these glasses which are basically reading glasses old people's glasses my other glasses distance but there's a point in between where I struggle. And my distance glasses are fade from close up to further out. But they're not, they're just, my eyes have changed. So I wear my close up glasses when we're here because <clears throat> I want to see my screen and her screen. But the out a little bit is a little tougher. So when we turn that, that chat on a 55 inch screen on its side. Man, I, I can see that without my glasses on. It's wonderful. So, um, and I, you know, I used to do lives with with uh, Tony, Uncle Tony, and Uncle Kathy, and she'd sit there. She does everything on her phone, and Tony and I'd be sitting across from her, and she's doing the whole chat on her phone. Then she'd have to get up and go to the bathroom or something, and I'd take over the phone. That was impossible. I try to scroll. I, I don't know how she even does it. This, with this big screen, is so good for the chat. I'm never doing that, you know. It, it was overwhelming at first. There's a, a lot going room. on, but it's yeah, a, it's a living room. It's a living room. So, well, this is what we do. We enjoy this. We work in the shop. He likes this better than trying to make uh, videos. I this is his thing. She'd so. rather do videos. I'd rather do lives. I like doing lives, so... I do yeah. enjoy getting to like communicate with people and get to know people. I, I, I Oh it's really fun. And you missed something, the screen down there. Well, I pointed it, but we, we could the see part down of the there studio show, down there. Shows what's going on. We can see right now there's fifteen people and uh, there's seventy eight views of fourteen people. Somebody just left. Uh, computing sucks on a phone. Yeah, you know, I've gotten so I use my phone for some banking stuff. But I didn't really like it, so I kind of quit doing that, and then uh, changed banks, and I never put the, I never put the new uh, app on the phone because I really didn't enjoy it. And then what else do I do on the phone? I know I do some other things on the phone. Oh, Mexican Specs uh, Instagram. I do that on the phone. I, I just I'm always on the phone looking at his his cars. Uh, communicating in English is fun. Man, I wish I spoke Spanish as well. If I try to speak Spanish, Russian comes out because it's a foreign language to me. <laughs> and I'll be like, a la izquierda, a la derecha. And then, then I'll be in, doing it in Russian and I try to... One time I gave some guy needed directions and my former wife knew the way and she told me in Russian I translated it into Spanish because I knew right and left in Spanish. That was pretty funny. But... um Mostly, I, I, my Russian is probably about a three, and my Spanish is probably about a one. For my vision, I use a weaker contact lens in my left eye for seeing clear up close, and a stronger lens in my right eye. Oh, so you can swap eyes. That's a really common trick Man, that they I recommend that. for you. It depends on your prescription I whether they're going to do that. You know what, Dan E. Boy, join Instagram. And for one reason, subscribe to one person, Mexican Spec. And you will see so many cool cars that are for sale and pretty good prices. And you'll, you'll be wanting one of them right away. Thank you for being here, Iceman. Sleep well. Good. 4.30. Come, oh, 4.30. Yeah, that's how I used to be. Me, I had to get up at 3.30 in, in, in uh, Arizona. I had to be out at test site at 6. It was a long way. Uh, yeah, good, good, good having you here, Iceman. And you were first here, I think. I like instant pudding. <laughs> so derecha a la izquierda. Oh man, I haven't had incident. Esquerida? So Esquerida? Uh, 
yeah, I mean, I mean it. Join Instagram. It's easy. Do it on your phone, and subscribe to Mexican Spec. Just one one subscription. It's worth it. Co pick derecho is straight. See in. Uh, uh, Russia. I'll be right back, folks. Sorry. Russia is naprotiv is a cross. So I use that sometimes, like this way is naprotiv. Naprotiv is a cross. Uh, so I do, but I they don't sell it here. What is that? I don't sell it. Uh, okay. Otherwise, my close-up vision was blurry with two strong lenses in both eyes. Just got a little cataract surgery. A friend of mine just got cataract surgery, and all of a sudden he can see again. He, This guy, he said his father was almost blind. He was almost blind. I worked with him. I worked with the guy for years. And then uh, and he had cataract surgery. And he's like, man, I can see. I can drive at night. I can. <laughs> he's like, same thing. He is. It's like a life changer to him. I had only cuss words in Russian. See, Babushka is a... Babushka is an old lady. Babushka is like a grandmother. Is it car? I don't know about that. Babushka. I don't know about that. Babushka, which a lot of people pronounce wrong. Uh, Babushka is a, is, a, uh, is a grandmother. Uh, I watch a show on Netflix in Russian and got nothing. It was all confusing. Yeah. I used to sit there and watch movies in Russia and I could understand about a third of it. I struggled with it. I really struggled with it. But if I did that a lot, which I don't do anymore, I could probably pick it up. Something just got light out of the corner of my eye. Kim's shining a flashlight around. I don't know did I mess up? I don't know what you're doing. Um, I caught light in the corner of my eye. Um, um, when I work on things, clear close-up vision is a must for inspecting parts for defects. Yeah. I got our dinner cooking. <laughs> oh, you got dinner cooking. Dinner. Think, we're yes. gonna have to get off here pretty. Before too long. It's mostly Babushka cooked, but I pre-cooked in the oven. Car hood. I don't know what Babushka is like a shawl, an old lady. Man, he's talking all kinds of stuff. Babushka. Babushka is a is a is a grandmother. Babushka. I shan't that trip. Shant that truck behind you. I that, want maybe want. I want. Ah, uh, uh, autocorrect. Autocorrect wrote something strange. A right? word that ain't even a word. That's probably somebody probably trying to type. That's it. an old contraction from like the eighteen hundreds. Um, it's a. Uh, huh. A babuska. Yeah, yes. Babuska. It could be. Um, I know a recent. He had one eye done, then two or three weeks later he had the other one done. He's back to driving and happy. So my father had it done too from Russian Babushka. Grandmother. Yeah, Babushka is his grandmother. Uh, and my former wife, my son was from a different marriage. He was already older. She was like 29 years old or something. And then my son, they had a, a son, so I had my first grandson. And so when she was like 29 years old, I started calling her Babushka. She'd laugh about it, but <laughs> it was kind of funny. What's the temperature down there? Like 25? Oh, what is it here? It's very fair still outside. Fair. Probably, That's a good temperature. Maybe it's 40 fair. or 45. It's fair. It like is. it could be worse. It is. 67. It's 50. 50. 50, 50 Fahrenheit here right now. It was, what, 70, 69 or something earlier today? What was it earlier today? Oh, why, why is it? No. Don't you want Samsung news? No. I want what I want. How I dare want... you try and do anything productive on your phone until we ask it you was, a bunch of it questions? Was, it was 72 today. It was nice. We were out picking up to... sticks so we could make a fire. It's supposed to get down to 37 tonight, 33 tomorrow night. Oh, we're gonna ask you you guys are getting snow, though, huh? We saw that. Remember, we were talking about it this morning. That it looked like there was going to be a big storm, and we were hoping that it would cut north and kind of miss us. <sighs> oh yes. Oh yeah. It, it yeah. It, the cold went north. And oh good. Us, the cold, We've had we did have a cold front go by, but it isn't that cold. And we got stuff to do. Oh. 
And we went out and we... Oh, I got to go to the doctor tomorrow at 2.30. Machini. Machini is a car. Machina, Russians have called their car, call their car a machina. And if they don't say anything else, machina is machine. So if they don't say anything else, machina means their car. But if they say something like automat machine, that's like an automatic gun. It's a machine that's automatic. And so there's all kinds of machinas, but just machina, it's the, it's the, it's the uh, car kaput, kaput, kaput. I don't know. You know, when I, anything I did in Russia. Oh, what is that truck? Koshka, Koshka's a cat. He said, shant that truck. He was asking what it was. What, oh, it's a Powell. It's a Powell, which is a, a truck that was made for two years, 1955 and 1956 in Southern California. It was put on a, like a 1940 Plymouth frame with all Plymouth running gear. They take the frames and refurbish them and make like new, and then they put their body on it and they sold them in uh, Southern California. And the Powell brothers did that for two years. Uh, let's see, what's the truck behind you? Sorry, spell chick ruined my last response. Okay. Oh, John Wilburn, I found out. Hey, John, something. we were looking for Gee, you. Clear these are good for it. They have eight and a quarter rear end with 410 gears and sure grip. Really? Wow. I didn't oh, think no. they had an eight and a quarter in them. Huh. And 410 gears, that's excellent. And we don't have a Liberty, we have a, a Patriot. Patriot. Which is a fake oh. Jeep. It doesn't have anything like that. It's a yeah. Powell Sport Wagon. You know, the sport wagon, it's me that has to get that. The sport wagon. Where is my... John! I lost my cursor. I have to show you a trick in... Um... Okay, here. Here, here, here. Oh, he's changing the picture. It but John, I need to show you a, a trick I can't, I can't in the StreamYard for when you have a guest. I can't make this go. There it is. There's the wagon version of it. There's a pickup and a wagon. A very, very few wagons. And the wagon, well, both the pickup and the wagon, those slide things that come out, were for to put fishing poles in. And there's two of them. There's one on each side or any other long thing that fits in there. And the taillights are actually below that. Yeah, Buick Sport Wagon. Oh, man. It's not a Crosley. I'm betting zero tonight. Oh, this is much bigger than a Crosley. When I stand next to that, uh, my eyeballs are about the height of the roof. I can't see over the top of it. It's it's taller than me by an inch or two. Uh, so it's a... Uh, what next? It's a Greenbrier. Where's a Greenbrier? Ooh, I don't see Probably it. in the previous picture, okay. I would think. Yeah, Greenbrier's a Corvair van. Corvette. Uh, I, we are in the central time zone. I'm betting zero. What, what else am I missing here? Uh, Looks expect Buick Sport Wagon, and I like Sport Wagons. I was telling her I want a Sport Wagon to cut the, you know, bust it up on one with a good top, though, so I can take the top off and put it on my Ford van. Um, John, are you set, like, lined up good for Friday night guests? Or can, I could throw him on sometime on you Friday put, night. make John Wilburn our first guest? We want to do a guest. Well, I... I don't know. Well, I don't want to force John into being our guest, but I was kind of Mexican offering spec. it. He... Adios. And, and oh, good night. Gracias. Mexican Thank spec. you for being here. Thank you for being a, 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 a wrench. And uh, we'll see you. We'll see you Sunday night after the after the to for the after the Tony show and next Tuesday. I hope. I hope you're around. Looks like early liberties that were two wheel drives may have forty two R. Oh, the liberties. Okay. Yeah, but were those transmissions have the same bell house? They had a Jeep bell housing, or did they have small block Mopar bell housing? Central time zone here, too. I'll Close be back to in a minute. Eastern I time flip. zones. Yeah, if, if we head east, it's about an hour. We'll be in the eastern time yeah, zone. Yeah, we're right on the edge. <clears throat> Rotten edge. I knew somebody, this girl, a woman that I knew, I just married this guy, but when they met each other in a bar, she wanted to know where he was from. And she, he said with his southern accent, Rotten Edge, North Carolina. And she thought he said Rotten Edge, North Carolina. So she's looking on the map for Rotten Edge, North Carolina. Uh, oh, buying cars and trucks. Hey, and I'm not kidding. 
Danny Boy, get you gotta do this. Get get Instagram. Just subscribe to one person, and that would be Mexican Spec. You will see cars you don't normally see for sale, and they're down there in warm, dry Mexico where there's no rust. It's amazing. It's just like Arizona cars, except you get stuff without that's all not all uh, all bogged down with all the smog equipment. You know, nice small block Ford, Fairmonts, and everything. Stuff you won't believe that's available. And uh, he sells them in the U.S. And he knows how to get them into the U.S. without a problem. Kim just ran off. I don't know what she's doing. Oh, I'm looking out through the door. She's out messing with the gas grill. You got the gas grill going. You're bringing food in here? No, no how, food in How are we going to share food with our people oh you watch him on YouTube yeah but I don't think he has nearly the cars on YouTube as he does on uh, Instagram uh, yeah I wish Mexican spec would do more uh, would do more uh, uh, YouTube videos of his cars yeah three-speed manuals on Fairmonts and sometimes four-speed manuals on the floor yeah see I lived in Arizona for 15 years lived in Yuma and it's hot and toasty and dry. There's not a spot of rust on anything down there. I mean, there might not be any interior in it, but, you know, uh, upholstery guys can fix that stuff. My charcoal grill some burgers tonight. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. She's doing chicken and some other stuff. Steak and pork chops. It looks like the Liberties may have... All been 45 RF, but that's surely part of why there are none left on the road. Thanks, you two. Got to get some sleep. See you next. K. Nelson, thanks for being here. Hope you get enough sleep. I struggle with that sometimes. Uh, yeah, and we'll be here probably after Tony, after the Tony show on Sunday night. Liberty Terrorism. Or it'll be Ari. Yeah, Ari could do the After the Tony Show, too. 63 inches. An old Pontiac. In old, probably any old Pontiacs in Mexico. 60s to early 70s. Tell you what, he's got everything. Done. And he's got stuff you can't get in the U.S. Those little tiny Chevy El Camino looking things that are about the size of a Geo Metro. All rears, not tears. That makes more sense. in Mexico. Yeah, 63 um, inches is pretty wide. Um, yeah, I don't remember what he has. If you get on Instagram and just subscribe to him if you don't want to mess with that. If you don't want to mess with anything else, just get Instagram, subscribe to Mexican Spec, and look at everything he's got. That he, I don't think he... He may own some of those cars, but most of them... He brokers them, and he gets them into the U.S. He knows how to do that. He knows how to do it. He knows how to get the ones here that are legal to bring into the U.S. because of age restrictions and all this kind of stuff and smog and all that crap. But once they get to be a certain age, you can pretty much bring them in the way they are, unless you're in California. And, uh, yeah, he may have... Uh, the, the sliding container is for fishing rods. Oh, yeah, that's that's they go all the way up to the doors, and that's... They said, Powell said they were for fishing poles, but you can put pool cues in them, you can put anything in them. They're pretty cool. Uh, some with 421 engine. Man, I remember those engines. Man, one of my favorite cars I had was, uh, it was a 67 Pontiac Catalina, two-door, big, long, fastback looking hardtop thing. And it had a, I think it had a 389 in it, but 67, did they have 400s or 389s? Don't remember. But it was just a nice big cruiser. Uh, it's been two hours and 43 minutes. They have to be 25 years old. Yeah, and that may be right, but you know, 25 year old cars are, you know, to me, those are almost, they're fairly new cars now. Yeah, and that includes 25 years old. That includes what? All the, all the Fox body cars and you know, all kinds of stuff he's got down. Just cool stuff. Yeah, I think we might call it quits here pretty soon. 
What do no. you think, Kim? I think we can call it quits. What? You guys have been a great audience. We loved having you. We love being able to be here with you. We put in all this effort. We take up our whole living room um, so that we're able to do this one night a week or two nights a week and be here with you. We don't make any money. It's just really good community. I, I know this is the highlight of his week, and I, I look forward to it as well. Although there's a little more stress and panic from me, he just loves it. It's definitely worth doing just for his benefit as well as hopefully for yours. We love talking about it. I learn something new every week, and I hope that you do too. Uh, we love that you share your experience, your stories, your uh, prompts. Like, look at this, look at that. It's fun. I so, like that part. So my 67 was a 400. I, I honestly couldn't remember. I thought it was a 400, and I said that last week, and I thought, oh, wait a minute. Don't do this one. to me. He'll just keep going. Maybe I'm wrong. No, he, he put up, uh, Waylon Burger put it up what it really is. Thank it's you, Waylon. A, it's a, it's a, it was a 400. Box Bodies entered 31 years ago, so all of them qualify. Yep. So, well, thank, thank you. Everybody. We'll see you Sunday night or next Tuesday if you choose, and uh, that's going to be it. Thanks.